Welcome, everybody. Code Conquest 2022 Hackathon is here. Teams are ready. We've got 19 teams competing in the largest ever junior high division interdistrict competitive hackathon league. This is the prototypical division. We uh, are excited to have you all here. This is really a celebration of all of you who have worked so hard. There's been so many team tryouts and so many people participating from all of the schools that are involved. That today is all about celebrating that hard work and the creative skills that are present across our community. So whether or not you get a uh, effective result as you hoped, that's not the intent for the day. The day is really about celebrating your creativity and uh, getting us a chance to see what's possible when you bring some creative minds together to work on solving challenges. Nobody has seen any of the challenges yet. At the start of this map, you're going to effectively be presented with a new feature that we've built into this map called an auto gate. And as everyone's learned, it's going to be the pyramid on the map. And viewers will be able to see this as the map launches itself. Teams will be challenged to solve this auto gate challenge that has been pre-programmed. As soon as one member of the team, every, every member of the team is going to have an equal opportunity to solve that challenge. As soon as one member of the team solves it, the entire team gains access to the rest of the map that that territory is controlling. So this gives everybody an equal opportunity, and uh, you'll see uh, the challenge present itself in moments. All right. Now, I'm as we said before we kicked off this event, talking behind the scenes, we've got a lot of exciting people involved in this event, not only 19 teams from 19 schools, but uh, we've got mentor judges behind the scenes spread out all over New York and actually as far away as Michigan today. So we're bringing in uh, a lot of resources. We've got networks in every school running, which you can see on our camera. Everybody's gathered together. We've got a lot of hope that tech serves us well today. Decentralized, distributed servers, everybody wish them well. They're going to be burning up, trying to keep up with all your creativity. And uh, it should be an exciting day. I'm joined and we'll be passing the torch to our MC, the great Dom King, Mr. Pomera, who uh, you will see over on the left frame in the middle. And he has joined us from Cisco Systems. So we're excited to have you participating today. And mentor Melora will be up in the top of your frame and she'll be uh, participating with the Dom King as the MCs for the event. I'll be kind of going all over the place, helping judges helping resolve problems, seeing what we can do. And uh, I just want to send out a, a big personal shout out to my dev team who has really put in a lot of long hours and a lot of hard work led by mentor Bo and mentor Mike and mentor Jinx, who are just spectacular and have really put in the time. They understand what it means to be a hacker. They understand what it means to want to celebrate skills. And so hopefully today we'll go off exactly as we expect and not only can be a celebration of technology itself and the skills that everybody's advancing and all of you for participating, but really start to put forth an idea of what's possible when collaboration comes together in a, in a high-end event like this. With that said, let me pass the torch over to Dom King for some remarks. Well, thank you, Devin, and I thank you, Laura, for having me today. Uh, special thanks to mentor Doug, uh, who I actually wrote a song about uh, that we might break out later. You never know. Um, it's uh, great to be back here. And I, I can tell you that if uh, if a school district is running on Cisco networks, I'm confident in their technology. Let me introduce the teams. Uh, we have some group of teams today, very uh, super excited, couldn't be more excited. So kicking it off, we're gonna go with um, one of the coding dynasties of Long Island, uh, SIO Source Code, led by their coaches, Diane Burke. With their team members, author, who's the captain, Fern Chicken, Random Kid, Fly Jet 6, Justin, Mesh, Woobly 9, and Drive Car 8. We also are joined today by the HBT Thons, led by their coaches, Megan Herbel and Katie Ruckel. With their team members, the captain, Mastermind, with BTS, 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 Hatch User, Glitch. Coder 123, Layla, Simply, Simply O, and Investor Sam. We also have the HBT Pythons, again, led by their coaches, Megan Herbal, Katie Ruckel. Um, with their team members, uh, their captain is Nero369, Drift, Code for Life, 
who banned Doc Productions, Irrational Number, Boost, Knighton, and Hacker Guy. ESM, my favorite team, which is actually not necessarily my favorite team, but that's their team name, uh, are led by their coaches, Greg Boost Goslin. Their team members are Captain Therapist 5347, with Schmenz, Neurologist Dio Brando, Tori Costava, Intelligence Lover, and Kev Pev with Ermes. Joining us also is the man Hacks It Potatoes, led by Rob Monster Mashburn. Their team members are ca with Captain Skater Queen, Chubby Bunny, Rocky, Average Coding Enthusiast, Atomic 107, Me for President, Sushi Cat, and Bunny Boy. Papa's Code Crackers of Bullmore Merrick, led by their coach, Dan Stieglitz. Their team members, Captain Turtles, L Code, Luke, Lindsay, Underscore, James, Jake, and Gavin. Mams Hacks a Lot, also led by Dan Stieglitz, with their team captain, Ryan, AJ.comX, Abe, But in Space, Flying Puppy, Nicolo, Luke, Jonas, Sid. The Miniola Matrix, led by Lauren Goldfarb and Kelly Clifford. Their team captain is Torch UA with The Muppet, Princess of the Frog, Artemis 626, Caliber, Coffee Archon, Dev UKR, and Kermit the Frog, UKR UA. Coming to us is the Falcon Force from Locust Valley with their coaches Joseph Lee and Kevin Gabrzak with their team captain, Abigail, with Sad Ads 4, Jeffrey, Akila Cotton, in INFP, A Secret, Julius, and Alexander. Coming from East Williston, the house-bred Wildcats, led, brought, led by Audra Brugerman and Kim Kelleher, with their team captain, Official Bread, Maybe House, Hacker, Ico Lizard, Yes House, Cedar the Cat Lady Hacker, Megan, and the and the bot. Also joining us from East Williston, Royal Waffle Wildcats, with their coaches again, Audra Bieberman and Kim Keller. Their team members are the official croissant, their team captain, Arjun Super Stringer, HS2022, Any Boy, Official Cheesecake. Mr. Woobly Googly's Mouse House, Layla, and No House. How about getting through that with a straight face? The Harborfield Hackers, led by Mary Lynn Karpensky and Jennifer Ahrens. Their team members are Captain John, Logan, Liam T., Christian, Out of Pumpkins, O oh Greatest One, Liam W., Soccer Star 123. Also from Harborfield, the Tornadoes, again, led by the same coaches, Mary Lynn Karpensky and Jennifer Ahrens. Their team members are Captain Alias, Lucas, Caitlin the Duck, Aquatical Yang, and Edward C4. Your HMS Coding Eagles from Hopog, led by Coach Brian Ferrara, with team members, Team Captain the Golden Feather, Roboztech, Coding Dude 45, Neo Dude 64, a random guy, the Jolly Green Eagle, Mac and Cheese, and Chris. Your Eagles in control from Bethpage, led by their coaches, Christopher Attard, Leon Laspina, and Shannon Tedesco, led by their captain, Knotson, with Witsu La Puch Puchli, Amoxley, La Tuani, Etzal Coato, Yana, Chensamani, Mixoa, and Chris. Nicely grand done. <laughs> I can't believe I got through that. All right, Grand Gamers from Belmore Merrick. Your coach, Michelle Biancardo, with your captain is your display name with Triple E, Stompy Stomp Stomp, Cosm C. Also on the team, Anonymous, Hugan King 5527, and, and Ian. Your West Hempstead Rams, led by Coach Ara Perlo, Ram Fam. Team members, Captain Infrognito. Aztec Pandan, Montezuma, Aztec Coder, Parallel Aztec, Aztec Empire, Anna Milkshake, and Javon. Your AP Keystrokes from Kings Park with Sam Cruz. Your team member, Captain Ace, Lofi, Hacker Wolf, 
Zoom guy, JM underscore, Caw, it's underscore crisp, and little huddy. Your pro granders from Belmore, Merrick, with Coach Michelle Biancardo, Captain Vortex, with In Kid KF, I am Evan, UFL QW, Hank, the sweet and sour sauce, Mr. Pac Man, and Dillo J. Those are your teams for Code Conquest 2022. All right. And with that, we are ready to send you out to your breakout rooms. Teams will be sent to breakout rooms. If you are running into any trouble, you may request help from Trish. You'll be able to do that in your chat and try to direct message us if you can. Um, If you have, hopefully everything will be just fine. Uh, But if you do have any questions or concerns, you can do that. All right. So with that, I'm going to have... Trish, start sending everybody out to breakout rooms, and uh, we'll turn the map on here, and may the best team win. Good luck, everybody. Stay strong. And remember, at the end of the day, you've already won because you're here. Good luck to everybody. As mentor Doug flashes back the map on the screen, let me give some, As and teams are being sent to their breakout rooms, I'll give you a little description of what viewers are seeing. So each of these hieroglyphs on the map that you see represented by colors represent the team capitals. Every team has their own capital and they've created a capital defense project to defend that capital. The capital defense project won't come into play until the final 30 minutes of competition when at that time, if a team fails to occupy another territory on the map, then other teams will be able to attack their capital. And so teams have been encouraged to create multiple capital defense projects. One will defend the other's will be able to attack other territories in those final 30 minutes. This is the only project that was allowed to be created before the start of this event. Per the spirit of a hackathon, it's really about celebrating the creativity of today. So we don't, we're not accessing old code, old repositories, and just recycling it and reskinning it for the day. That, that kind of defeats the purpose. The purpose today is to celebrate what we can build in the three hours that we have allotted for the time of this, this hackathon. Each of the territories on the map is represented by a territory challenge. In order for a team to solve that challenge, they'll start at the pyramid that you see represented. That pyramid is hovering above the lands, and each of the teams represent ancient alien technologists coming to the pyramid to solve the programmatic challenge that the pyramid stores. Once they do so, they'll be provisioned with access to the mainland territories. Those mainland territories are all neighbored with the territories that are adjacent to them. So in order to occupy one territory that is disconnected from another territory that you might possess, you have to then move through each territory that is adjacently connected in order to move your way across the geography. So this is an event that's not just creative, it has some strategy. We're kind of based off the board game risk for those that are familiar. And so it's about using strategy, team communication, having the captains know who's working on what, what priorities are being made and what territory flow are they going to take once they get on the map. Those decisions will all come into play to determine who wins the final results. And the final result will be represented by the scores that you see on the left-hand side where everybody has a number one associated with their team colors. So for viewers, you'll be able to watch that, that flow on the right-hand side where you'll see a combat log. You're going to see attacks represented by a sword. Defenses represented by a shield, and uh, a new icon will show up for our auto gate territory that teams will all be able to solve. So it's looking like we're about three minutes away from our our launch of this event. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Mentor Malora, and I'm going to go in and start making sure everything's set up for our launch. All right. So the excitement is climbing. Uh, You know, I like to look back a little bit about this event. And I think back to the original days where this came from. And, you know, we, when we were uh, running all of our summer camp programs, we used to try to innovate new and fun ways to motivate learning and drive the skill forward. And uh, at the time, one of our young Kidoyo students came to us and said, you know, it would be great if we could have it be like a map battle where we were all trying to take over territories. And so we asked him to prototype it and he drew it on a little piece of paper and then he drew it on a whiteboard and we played it a couple of times. And from there, we had different iterations of this coming forward all the way to where we are here today. 
The first live big school event we had three years ago was hosted by Mineola, brave enough to take that on for us and all of the uh, unknowns that could come from bringing that many teams pulling from the network. Uh, from there, we've grown. This year, we're we that first year we had 10 teams. This year, we have 60 teams competing in all, all three of the divisions. So it is a big event. We're super excited about it. Um, throughout the uh, event, we're going to be playing some videos. Uh, Dom King and I had the opportunity to go out and meet with some of our schools. We have many more interviews that'll be coming for the next two events as well. Uh, so if you were not interviewed, expect to have your door knocked on soon. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to be dropping into a couple of the coaches' rooms today to just try to get a feel for what's going on in the room, see if we can tap into some of the creativity, excitement, and of course, stress in all the rooms. Uh, so we're excited to making our way around and seeing everybody. Uh, what do you think you're going to see this year, uh, Dom King? Well, uh, so it's funny you say that. We I talked to a couple of different coaches prior to the event. Some coaches are going to unveil uh, different strategies than they've used historically in the past. Um, what's nice is we have a, a seasoned group of coaches. Um, the ones I'm excited to see is though, how do you manage multiple teams? That's one of the questions we're going to ask the coaches because when you have multiple teams, there, there's just so much that could happen, uh, and so much responsibility. Uh, I am, I am always blown away, uh, by the amount of talent that we have here on Long Island. Um, every time I meet a, a coach or I meet some of the, uh, the students, um, the coders, I, I'm shocked at how uh, how advanced they are. Uh, absolutely terrific. So super excited uh, because we were going into um, you know into the heart of the Aztec Empire. I had to change my hat to because I don't, don't want to get a sunburn. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm excited Looking about good. that as well. Let me just announce we're going to now start a 10 second countdown to the launch of this map. I will manually launch the map at this point. All teams will be able to click on the AutoGate Pyramid territory and begin solving the challenge. Some of the challenges will be new for you. These are brand new features. So uh, give yourself a chance to digest what's being asked. Don't overthink it. And good luck to everybody. 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's get ready to hack. Oh, oh, here we go. Here Very we excited. go. All right. So uh, the first thing that we're, we're not going to see any real action on the map immediately because right now the teams all have to come through that pyramid. That is an auto gate. That's brand new for this year. They're all seeing it for the very first time. And in it, what we're seeing is a series of logic puzzles, some general historical quizzes about the Aztec empire in general. Uh, but really, a lot of these logic puzzles are going to put these kids' brains to the test, and we're going to start to see strategy unfold. They can't attack any of the territories until they get through that gate, and everybody has to get through the gate. Once you see what, what's going to happen is, is the first team to get through, that pyramid's going to light up their color. The next team to come through, will it'll light the pyramid up that color, and it'll start flipping between the two colors. Eventually, we should see all 19 teams' colors being represented as that auto gate changes quickly. Um, so we're ready for that. But while we're waiting for some action to happen on the map, sounds like a good time for us to break out to our first admin interview. As I mentioned, you know, these guys were here for us at the very beginning of all of this, and especially at the very beginning of this hackathon, brave enough to set themselves out there and put the spotlight on potential failure, as we all have to do in order to succeed. So I'd like to uh, turn our attention now to a video uh, interview with the directors of the Mineola School District, Dr. Michael Nagler and Matt Gavin. We're here at Mineola School District. Moore and I are very excited to be interviewing the superintendent of schools, Dr. Michael Nagler, and the deputy superintendent, Matthew Gavin. Welcome, gentlemen. Great, great to be here. Big guy. Well, we, we're kind of here all the time, so it's great to have you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us. We're really excited to be here. So we have the Inner District Hackathon League coming. Mm -hmm. uh, the next event's coming up. You know, obviously the first one was here, like many other things in Mineola. You're welcome. You're, thank you very much. <laughs> it was uh, 
10 teams to start off that first year, and we have 60 teams competing this year. So the popularity has grown. We're seeing it drive passion and education, and we're bringing in more and more people who traditionally wouldn't be in that. Um, so who do you consider your rival? Um, I, I think the, the school districts have done very well previously. You have Syosset so up there. Um, How much do you think a factor of that is Ed Escobar? Giving away yeah, the absolutely. Oldest secrets. Yeah, absolutely. Giving Ed is mold. <laughs> We've realized right. that for years, but um, with Twilight, we're dealing with that. Dealing with that. I know where he lives. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you think about Mineola, uh, the first word that comes to mind is innovation. Um, can you basically tell us some of the uh, innovations that you guys are looking at moving forward? Well, we're constantly thinking about school, the way children interact in school, and how to make it uh, more applicable to their lives as they, they graduate. So a lot of our innovations are rethinking school in general, the purpose of school, um, what school means, what, what we should learn and be able to do when we, when we leave, either into college or into the workforce. So we're currently uh, dabbling in a new concept for high school that we're calling Synergy. That's taking up most of our time. Um, so it, innovation comes in a lot of different forms. This, this, this iteration is not technology driven, it's more conceptual. You know, it's, it's interesting because I think like definitely when you go out there on the island, we now are hearing a lot about Mineola and people are striving to do some of the things that are happening here. One of the things that was most interesting to me because it gets asked to me continually is how do you get so many girls involved? And this is, I believe, the third year in a row that Mineola has been recognized for your high participation of females in computer science. What do you attribute that to? Well, I think it starts with the idea that we, we try to create opportunities for everyone, not opportunities for one group over another group. And I think that we have found a positive, a positive pathway for our, our female students to do to continue to progress in computer science, and they're very successful. And the fact that we're going with AP Computer Science for all of our ninth graders this year has also, you know, widened that out. So we we are very excited about that initiative as well. Now it's interesting because. Um, you have you also happen to have female instructors leading those yeah, courses. That was part two. Of the, that, the, the first is that a big yeah. is that a big contributor? You think to it is, the girls? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, they absolutely. serve as tremendous role models. I mean, we have two brilliant teachers that have, are, are spearheading the computer science. Not to mention um, a brilliant math teacher who is also working it as mixed into the uh, AP computer science piece. So it's it's really it's really a positive experience for the girls. Yeah. Well, for districts who are asking, and I know that plenty do, this is how you're bringing more women into the STEM fields, but specifically into computer science, which is traditionally male-dominated. So it's very exciting to see that. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do next. Do you think that these, these kids who are taking the AP Computer Science principles now are looking towards some of the dual enrollment opportunities you're offering? Oh, absolutely. You, you know, we have a fully asynchronous dual enrollment as well as a uh, hybrid as well as um, totally synchronous. So we, we mix up the opportunities for kids and uh, they, the, kid, the, the learners are making connections to the teachers. Those same teachers are now teaching the, C, the APCS and the extended classes. So it, it's all relationships as well. And I think, you know, having that strong foundation of coding in the elementary level so the, the current ninth grade has been coding, you know, with Kid Oyo for a very long time. Yeah. Things since things since first grade now, first or second grade. Yeah. So you know they have a, a wealth of experience. Um, you know we have different different ways that they can tackle it. They have experience both Python and in Scratch. That there are both different ways for them to tackle their projects and work. So they're very comfortable, and it allows us, you know, almost like an infinite expansion within your program. That's really given them a ton of experience that's helped us out. How do you think that the last, you know, the last couple of years have been challenging for everybody, right. but for school districts, maybe more so than any place else. How do you see the way that everybody moved to this virtual and asynchronous sense playing out in the next couple of years? Will it stay? Will it move? Yeah, and just to add on that, do you think hybrid is going to stay? Um, I, I think there's a lot of silver linings we can find with the pandemic and doing asynchronous work and virtual teaching. So yes, I think it's here to stay. I, I think it's an important distinction to make that we're not we're not replacing teachers. It's not you know we're not automating education, 
but we certainly have this tool set we want to use. Yeah, I see it kind of as like uh, the best school districts in Mineola being maybe the top of that list is that you're creating another tool and resource with more teachers in the room, kind of. Technology can serve as an assistant to the teachers, but we can't replace the teachers. Anybody else, you, anybody you want to call out? I don't as think far there's as any district solid... you're looking to call out here? Uh, really well, the district I'm calling out, it doesn't participate. Well, that's, it, you know, so, it's my home district. You know, I so think, who else would you like to see? That's a great question. Well, let's, go with the, let's go with the whole, you know, hackathon model where there are contiguous territories, right? So let's talk about Garden City to the south. Harris to the north. Love to see them both. We take them both out, right? That's right. We, right love yeah. to see them both. We love to see them more involved. Obviously, Garden City. You know, my son will instantly give them some uh, credibility. That's, that's big. Yeah, that's, uh, a, but, that's a big bat right there. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you you're starting off with a heavy hitter, but um, I think I think we have to continue pushing the envelope with CS as a mandatory course. So you know something interesting. That 1983, Nation at Risk, identifies computer science as a key subject that we need to learn going forward. That's 83. Yeah. And I think everyone is starting to see the importance of knowing computational thinking, computer science, as, as a discipline, and how that discipline is woven into every other academic subject. It really is not a standalone subject. And we have to start addressing that. I mean, it's silly. It's a language other, everyone should know. The other piece with that is we've got 60 you know, high quality districts participating in this right now. You know, college you know, science, computer science department should be coming here to look at these things, to see the talent that's, that's available to them. Absolutely. You know, this could be, this could be something very special, whether it's Stony Brook or, you know, you know, a different MIT, you name it. We have talent here, coding talent that you know, they can come and take a look at it and, and see for themselves the kind of problems these students solve on a daily basis, you know, in this kind of a setting. My frustration with the way my colleagues treat CS is a, is a one-time event. You know, it's an hour by code or it's a, 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 an elective or it's something that is um, one and done. That can't be the outlook. The outlook has to be a systemic implementation of the work. And I think it's already been, your librarians are a key, key resource. Everybody has library. Yes, and a lot of these grants that are available now through the state allow for you to bring in more librarians. Yep. And I would say when I look across, especially in the younger elementary programs, those future ready librarians are the key to success. Yeah, you, you don't have to be limited that I have to create a course for kids to take. There are plenty of opportunities to instruct in CS and give kids a a systemic opportunity to do the work and, and get a passion for it. Once they have a passion for it, uh, the avenues are there for them to explore. Well, we can't thank you enough for having us thank here. Thank you so Love much. it, love it, absolutely. From Mineola, Matt and Melora reporting Code Conquest 2022. Excellent, welcome back. That was a great interview. As you've seen, the map has evolved appropriately during that interview. Mineola has, has achieved the first team to solve the Autogate territory. You can see the pyramid is represented by their team color. They have six points. The pyramid territory is worth five points on this map. And what you will now see as the teams are continuing to solve that Autogate is that as additional teams solve the auto gate, the little flag at the base of the pyramid will start, will show a color up just on time. The second and the third team has solved it. Wow. The pyramid will shift colors between the teams that are occupying and have successfully solved the auto gate. Each team will earn five points. Since this is a prototype feature and today is all about prototyping, even our dev teams prototyping. If after 45 minutes, there is anyone who has not solved the autogate, it will be released and all teams will be joining the map. It will just be a time penalty, but everybody will receive the points of this territory. Obviously, calibrating some of these challenges is kind of a uh, prototyping activity in and of itself. Now that the teams who have solved it, which you can see now we have Mineola, Grand Gamers, HBT Pythons, and HBT Pythons, and Pro Granders have all solved it. They now have access to the rest of the map, and you're going to start seeing capital. You're going to start seeing territory attacks, which have just happened. You'll see a number appear on the territory, which will showcase how many pending attacks are on that territory. 
the judges will be evaluating to see whether they meet the criteria successfully for the first attack. If it meets the criteria, it's going to win that territory and occupy it. And all future attacks will have to be superior to the current project holding the territory. So that's where the, this really starts getting interesting. The choices you make about the territories you attack and how substantial your efforts are in developing projects to hold those territories over time. We're really starting to see teams solve that territory. So I'm going to pass this over to the Dom King and Melora to give us our play-by-play -play commentary. Thanks, Doug. Right. Thank Pretty you, exciting. Yeah, I didn't expect to see all these teams pop through there at the same time. So uh, you can see that new icon there too, the boat passing through the gate. And uh, that gate is changing hands, changing color. We've got our first attack on the, our second attack is on the map too. That first attack up there, Dom King, that looks like, uh, I don't know if you want to take a, oh, this one I can actually pronounce. This is the Yucca Territory. So <laughs> I'll take that one. The I've Yucca been, uh, I've Territory is asking for uh, any tool, any language. That means they can use any uh, programming language and any of the editors that are available to create with. Uh, and so this one is a is a, is an Aztec or Mayan math challenge. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. They're looking to incorporate some traditional Mayan math symbols and in with a, a gameplay of some sort. Or on that, is there a, is there a point differential for any of the territories? The territories themselves are all sitting with one point. The gate, as you saw, has, is five points. So getting through that gate was really uh, a big point earner for the teams and obviously a, a crucial part of the gameplay to start to begin with. How about um, as we look at the map, and again, from a strategy standpoint, uh, in your opinion, does it make sense to, to put your best work forward first? Um, so you could try to ha have it as a stronghold or does it make sense as far as maybe put uh, a second tier project, um, and hold your, your, you know, your, your big, uh, your big plays to the end. Yeah. You ask a great question because we certainly have seen both strategies play out over time and both have won. So I think really what it comes down to at the end of the day is, all of the various teams that we've got going here because some are going to dominate. They're going to come out with a project that's so intense that there's no chance of anybody taking it over. And they're going to look for a strategic position on this map. The first territories that are open to them is everything on the coastlines. So they're going to try to hit the coastline territories first, but within that, they still have to figure out, you know, can I attack something that's around there? Because they can't attack anything until they're bordering it. So that's really going to be, we're going to see a combination of strategy come out. It, there's no sense in attacking a territory if you can't do any of the projects around that territory. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great point. And um, just so the people uh, at home know that uh, ahead of time, people know what the different projects are now that they're on the map, they can look and say, okay, you know, this is a Python uh, I might not have the strongest Python team, so maybe I go after uh, something with pixel art. Uh, is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you're right now you're going to see the role of the captain really take shape because the captain needs to be forward looking on that map. You have to think three, four, five steps ahead. You can't be focused on just the territory. Sometimes other teams focus on that territory. You really have no idea what anybody else is going after. So there's that combination of, you know, the team the captain knowing who has the strengths on the team, who they can assign to various projects, and then really start looking at that map play looks like you know we've got some more teams that have come through that gate beth page is through the gate we've got uh Sias at southwoods is through the gate and king's park came through the gate and it looks like the east williston hackers uh, uh housebred wildcats are actually through the map now too so we've got we're seeing more and more people come through the map now at this point there's probably even strategy do you dedicate all your team power to getting through that pyramid through that gate or do you look ahead and start building projects that are coming down the coastline for the second you get through, you're ready for that second attack. It's a brand I, I new think, element. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a great uh, addition to the game. Uh, you know, personally, I think uh, you have to dedicate everything you have to getting through that gate first, you know, use all of your big pieces, 
get through that. And then, because without that, it's a non-starter, right? You're, there's no territories to gobble. Plus it's five points. So it's worth five different territories. Um, you know, again, I, I had uh, spoken with a couple of the coaches prior to uh, today. And one of the things I talked to one coach and he said, the uh, thing we had talked about from a strategy standpoint is, Hey, listen, I'm, we're putting our best foot forward on every deal. So every single one of the territories we're going after, we're putting our best project and we're going to try to knock out everybody else so that they have to go through their list of projects. I've also heard, uh, talk to another coach who told me, Hey, we're going to put some of our, uh, I would say B level material, not, not C level, but B level material. We're going to put our B level material out, see if that's enough to hold off. And again, try, the, the goal is to get everybody to, um, uh, expend their, uh, if you'll allow the chess euphemism, ex, uh, extend, you know, uh, use their pawns, use some of the lesser pieces before you get to the rook or you get to the knight. So uh, really uh, exciting stuff already um, as we see teams starting to bang through the, the temple here. And there we go with our oh. first big win. And it's Mineola again, coming out of the gates strong. So they've got their first territory. Looks like uh, these territories are tough to get. I've seen some potential attacks and nothing take it. So, but we've got a lot on the map. Oh, we've got our second one. Looks like Syosset's on the map and immediately taken by Mineola. So what we saw was quickly Syosset took that one territory up there, which we are looking at. That's territory. Let's see if I can find that on my key. Hmm. I'll find it. Uh, that is a tur Python turtles challenge. So that is uh, trying to use the Python programming language and the turtle library to recreate an Olmec colossal head. So we saw some kids whipping out their Python skills. They absolutely would have had to build this right now. Uh, you can see that first territory that Mineola took is under attack with several other attacks coming through. Uh, meanwhile, we still have some teams struggling to get through that initial gate. Um, that could be a strategy play. We don't know. Uh, but, you know, you, you have, like you said, with that B game or that B project coming out, there's other inherent risks. You know, who's to say you're ever going to get that territory back if you didn't go for the first time? And then that determines what else you can attack. So you know, we're going to see that. Having uh, been through a couple of these hackathons now, you know, from my standpoint, uh, I would try to grab as many uh, unoccupied territories as possible and try to get as much real estate as I could. Um, you know, like playing the game of Monopoly, get as much as you can. And then everybody's chasing you versus, uh, you know, you chasing them. Um, you know, I, I'd spoken and, and, you know, everyone saw the interview. We had spoken to Dr. Nagler and, uh, and assistant superintendent Gavin. Um, I think it means a lot to them. I, I know they would love to bring the trophy home. Uh, so interested to see how that, uh, plays in as well, uh, which is such a great program over there. Uh, I think the trophy is the only thing they're missing. So I think they're, they're going to be looking to collect on that. Let me just jump in real quick right now. Everything seems to be going good. We've had a few technical server issues, got it all back up and running. Um, what you're seeing on the map is you'll see some of these uh, empty territories with numbers coming and going. That means the criteria have not been, been met on those, those early submissions, and they're having to go back to the drawing board and recreate their projects to better qualify for the territory challenge descriptions. As they are able to do that, they're stretching around the territory here. So we're starting to see a little bit of uh, of the coaching and team captain work and communication really taking root. You know, we've got we've got some new teams this year, so they're just experiencing how kind of creative computing and strategy works together, and they're going to learn really fast as they go. And then we've got some vets that have, this is the fourth year for the junior high division. So some of these coaches have been around and they know how to prepare their teams a little differently than they did when they first got started. And so maybe we're seeing some of that early in the event as well. But we've got everything working as expected. 13 teams have solved the auto gate. If we have any teams that have not solved the auto gate uh, around at 10 o'clock after 45 minutes, the auto gate will be opened. All teams will be admitted to the map. And like I said before, it'll only be the time penalty um, associate. Everybody will be able to proceed to the rest of the event. Right now we have Mineola on in the lead with nine. We have uh, Sio Source Code right behind him with seven. Uh, the Pro Granders uh, from Grand Avenue at seven. Uh, the Grand Gamers at six. So we we're we're on the move here. 
and then the Pythons uh, right behind them followed uh, tied with the Pythons. So exciting. It's uh, one thing I'm excited to see moving up the board right now is the West Hempstead Rams. Uh, they are on the move. Ram fam is uh, really putting together a great program. They've done a, a tremendous job. Um, can you talk a little bit about that, uh, Laura? Yeah, I mean, it's been really, you know, what, I, what I've seen coming out of the West Hempstead kids is they come into our Code LI community, which is Kiddo Yo Dark Mode, with an energy of wanting to lead. And to me, that's really when the magic starts to happen in the classroom is when you start to empower those student leaders, the ones who are building courses, building skills, and they're doing it with the intent to lift everybody. And that's kind of like what the whole kiddo yo methodology is here on the island is we're here together. Let's work really hard to make this the best possible place for everybody, pulling out the best skills, the best opportunities, you know, like I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing there. I mean, really it's hard to, it's hard to not, it's hard to focus on one district without looking at what's going on across them all, because it's such a collaborative spirit that it's impressive in that code LI, in that code LI community, we've got kids from Syosset, we've got them from Manhasset, we've got them from Hawpaw, we've got them from Eastport South Manor, we've got them from West Hempstead, we've got them from all over the place, Harbor Fields, uh, East Williston, and they're all in there collaborating and competing in an X game energy, which is, you know, that's what we're hoping for. Without yeah. uh, getting too lost in our moment here, we're going to jump ourselves out to another district that we took the opportunity to meet with. And uh, you're seeing them uh, on the map doing some things right now as well. But this uh, interview goes out to the Bethpage School District, where we had the opportunity to meet with the superintendent, Dave Schneider, the assistant superintendent, Mike Spence, and the director of technology, Andrew Choi. So let's hear what they had to say about how coding is going in the Bethpage School District. We'll be right back. Don't forget to use hashtag CodeConquest2022. It's great to be here today. We're in Bethpage School District. Great to have. Thanks for having us, guys. Oh, really well, appreciate pleasure. It. Thanks for being here. So, you know, working at Cisco uh, in 2022, it's pretty easy to see uh, how important computer science and coding is uh, for the workforce to match skills to the, you know, the demand for jobs. Tell us a little bit about your school district and how you guys are meeting those challenges. Well, well again, thanks for having us here. We appreciate the partnership that we've always had with Kadoyo and. One of the reasons we began that partnership was really to give our students an experiences that they could not necessarily get otherwise. We were one of the early adopters of one-to-one -one Chromebook and Google um, technology in the, in the classrooms. <clears throat> and being uh, a district that enhanced that experience in our classrooms, we had to now find a way in which to bring computer science to all of our students, knowing that that's part of the future. One of the ways we did that initially was, again, of course, with our upper level uh, computer classes, how they transitioned to the use of the one-to-one. -one. And then uh, as we expanded that down to K to 12 uh, throughout our entire school district, we were able to find places where things like coding would make their way into their classroom experiences. And so as we built out programs in the secondary schools, uh, slowly at the beginning and then realized the, the need for the foundational skills to be built, we took an approach in looking at our, our district-wide computer science uh, program and how we could enhance, enhance it with one platform that would give everybody a set of experiences and not uh, require teachers to have to really find out on their own what they think that might be useful. We want to give them a great tool, and so we were able to do that with Kadoyo. Um, this way, our elementary, middle, and high school have a progression of uh, foundational skills and then, of course, more enhanced skills. That's great. I know there's a lot that's done in the school day. Beyond the school year opportunities, what sort of enrichment opportunities are you offering for students in this emerging, demanding field? Uh, sure. So, um, you know, the, the first thing which I'll you know, speak to kind of outside the school day is, you know, we've seen uh, with our... Uh, Beth Page Athletic Camps and our uh, Golden Eagle Summer Academy, how our programming courses, our coding courses in there um, quickly fill up. And we've seen over the past couple of years, it's one of our more uh, popular offerings. Do you think that that demand is being driven by the students or the parents or a combination of both? I, I would say a combination of both. 
the awareness has really changed then. Certainly, you know, and, and just to echo on, uh, just to kind of add to what Andrew just spoke about, we have a, a summer enrichment program at the uh, during the summer, which runs about four to five weeks. Um, this past summer, we ran multiple coding courses with Godoyo in them for fourth and fifth graders, also for sixth and seventh graders. Then we moved that up to the high school, so we had ninth through twelfth graders involved with coding uh, through the summer. We're here for the hackathon, the upcoming interdistrict hackathon. Mm -hmm. Our first year, three years ago, we had ten teams. This year, we have sixty teams competing. So it's really gaining a lot of popularity and pushing kids forward. But what it's doing is a lot of kids who normally aren't in the space of being on a team are now on a team. How important do you think that is and how have you seen that play out as your teams are leading up to the hackathons? Well, we feel that's a huge important part of what our experiences for our kids are, are like. And, and as a starting point prior to our partnership in, with Kadoyo in the, in the computer science uh, realm of this broadly, we have a very, very successful and strong high school robotics team. And of course, coding being an integral yeah, part of their cool. success. Um, they, we've been to the world championships three years in a row pre-pandemic. So we know that um, the teamwork that goes into that, as a matter of fact, some of our awards were teamwork based, not just nice. simply the robot winning the uh, actual activity. Um, and so that is a you know, huge piece of all of this here. I was wondering if you could confirm a story for me. <clears throat> so, talking about team, we know one of the things that I've heard from a pretty reliable source is that you meet with the team right before the hackathon starts, and whatever speech, which I've heard are, are tremendous, but I heard you always finish it with the same thing, and that's beat Syosset. Can you <laughs> confirm that? Or? I, I can confirm that as a Syosset <laughs> parent, resident. Uh, I do get, come in here when we have our team works out of this room here, and all of the updates are coming up on the smart board behind us. And I do uh, remind them regularly, as uh, you know, my office is nearby, so I'm popping in all day. Noticing when Syasa comes above them and when they're above Syasa and reminding them where to, you know, finish off at the end of the day, I hope so. You versus Tom Rogers <laughs> in a Muppet impersonation. Could you do a Muppet impersonation I, as good I, as Tom? Because Tom can, Rogers has set the bar extremely high in the Muppet impersonations. Well, without a particular standard to know where I'm reaching for, it would be tough. But, you know, we, we have our, our family at home. My, my kids would definitely ask me to to throw in a, you know, a Kermit the Frog yeah, maybe or a Kermit. Beaker, you know, hi-ho, right, that kind of thing, so yeah, we're not, that's this could stop be on. there for This could be on, this could <laughs> absolutely, this could be the competition think, within the competition. I think this might have to be the halftime okay. competition, square <laughs> up. See the risks we're all willing to yeah, take, yeah. that's the risks we ask our kids to take every you day. You have to I'm lead by to put, example. Okay, so. You have to. If, it, if, if embarrassment is a requirement, I clearly can fulfill that. Well, we're looking forward to see what Beth Page brings to the hackathon this time. I know you guys have put up a really strong competition each year, so it's anyone's game. 60 teams <laughs> coming this year. There's a lot of opportunity. We wish you guys the best of luck. Thank yes. you so much for having us. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate it. From Beth Page School, Matt and Melora, Code Conquest 2022. All right, and we are back on the map, and a lot has changed since we've been gone. There are multiple territories. We now see that Southwoods has just taken the lead, one point ahead of Mineola, who is also tied with Grand Gamers. Still anyone's competition, as we know. We're so early. Uh, over on the, the right-hand side, we're seeing the combat log. So you see two symbols in the middle there. One is a shield and one is a sword. So you can see it says winner above, but basically what that means if you see the shield is that the person who won had a project defending that territory. They were attacked, but their project was the superior project, so it held that territory. When you see the sword, that means that in this case, as you're seeing there, uh, Beth Page held a territory. It was attacked by Grand Gamers, and the attacker won. So if the sword means the attacker won, and the territory just switched colors or switched hands, the shield means an attack was withstood, and there is no, uh, there's no, no switch of hands there with the team territories. We so, have a lot uh, of frantic uh, activity here, as we ooh. see. The territories are, are really uh, filling up quickly. Um, yeah, in some cases, we're seeing three, four attacks on one territory. Um, is everyone through the gate now? It, 
That's hard to tell on the view that I'm looking. What's that, Dev? So we've got one team that still needs to get through that gate. Uh, so once that team comes through that gate, they'll have the opportunity to start attacking the coastal territories. That's right. We only have one team left. And you know, just to give you some insight into how we, we work over here, as we tell all of our uh, students, as developers, we fail forward. It's all about attitude, right? We, we're going we're gonna to run into errors all the time. I and mean, we code, we fail. That's just kind of the way it works. So even as de professional developers, our team is looking and saying, oh, this is a high stress event. We built this auto gate and we realized it provisioned access to the whole map. What if the auto gate fails? Devastating. So we've built an auto bypass to deal with failing forward just in case. And so at 10 o'clock, after 45 minutes of competition, the rule that we put in place for this beta feature this year was that if any teams had not solved the auto gate, we would auto bypass it and they would be admitted to the rest of the map and they would be receiving the points of having solved the auto gate. First time use of the feature, not really knowing how to calibrate the uh, challenges you know, this is kind of our way of taking a little bit of stress off of ourselves, taking a little stress off the teams, which right now is a good thing for everybody. I think we got enough of that in the world. So they are 18 of the 19 teams have successfully passed the Autogate Challenge of their own efforts. And we got one left to do with about 11 minutes left before I bypass that. And now yeah, plenty, see plenty of time. activity on the map. Plenty of time. And, and again, it's not necessarily a huge disadvantage uh, going through towards the end, just because of the fact that the territories are up for grabs. So it's not like if you get a territory, it's over and you have to, there, it's not a race. Um, it's more of a marathon than a sprint. So plenty of time uh, for all the teams. Uh, you know, this board is going to change uh, several times in the next uh, couple hours here. So really uh, just some real cool stuff going on right now. Uh, I love the I love the frantic pace right now. I'd love to see what's going on uh, in some of those rooms. Yeah, well, we are going to have the opportunity to jump into a couple of these rooms. And in fact, we uh, will be ready uh, shortly for the first room. But right. I was going to take a look quick here. So we've got that one territory there kind of uh, right to the bottom left corner of the pyramid that is continuing continually being attacked. So I wanted to try to take a look in and see why are we seeing so many hits on that. So this was a any tool, any language, Dia de los Muertos. So if you're familiar with uh, any of the um, Mexican holidays, we have the Day of the Dead, and that is what Dia de los Muertos is. So this could be coming in as sprite editor challenges. It could be coming in as something drawn in Hatch or something drawn in Python. Um, so definitely we're seeing a lot of turnover on that because it is one of the more achievable challenges. As we get into those inner territories, the complexity of some of the challenges is gonna pop up a bit. Um, and we're gonna be really looking for the best of the best in terms of the code, the creativity. So much goes into the judging. I, I, the stress level in the judging room can't be overlooked. Uh, this is There's a lot riding on them and there's a lot of debate. I know just as we were even looking at the capital defense projects that came in yesterday, our own team had to eventually break down, get into a live debate so that we could really dig in district. and get nitty gritty Laura, about the code and the projects because, wow, there was so many, so many good ones that it was nearly impossible to decide. And that's happening in the judges room right now. Yeah. And uh, just for those uh, keeping score at home, uh, there are five uh, any projects. So those are kind of uh, the Pinoyo you know, wild card. Uh, so the, you'll see those territories will light up uh, quite a bit. Um, some of them are landlocked, so you're going to have to get through uh, other territories to get to them. Um, but I expect we'll see that one quite a, quite a few times change hands. Yeah, yeah. And, and it that's looks a good like point. You know, we make editors available to all students. And one of the editors that really probably one of our most powerful editors is called OYO website, own your own website. And it provisions a domain We're to every student South High to School. get their own hosting With and they've got all their IDE tools and Grover. various methods of supporting their code. First and foremost, but this is really where they can start to flex some of their skills and bring in some of the uh Here at you know, School. We've got Python editors, Dr. we've Tom got the ability Rogers to run scratch projects in a in a verified 
right. source environment. In 2022, it's if you're going to use JavaScript, you're going to bring in science, some advanced capabilities increases. with your scripting work. It's going to show up in their earlier website app. Park. So that's really Dr. Egan, exposing their artistic skills through, through sprite editors and giving them a chance to showcase some of the advanced skills is what we're going to see in those any tool, any language projects. Don't forget if you're uh, if you are using social media, use our hashtag code conquest 2022. All righty. Okay, so um, we are now going to take a moment here and we're going to jump into our first team. Now, this is the Manhaxit team led by Coach Bashburn. We're jumping into them first because they are the defending champs for this division right now. They were able to pull out a win last year. So we're curious to see what's going on in the room. We know it's a change every time. New team, new players, new strategy, new map. But let's see what's going on with Mr. Mashburn and the Manhaxit team. Hey, my first question is, is it the potatoes or the potatoes? Oh, okay. I imagine oh. he's uh, in a frantic pace right now. Yeah, and uh, I think Mentor Trish is with them. So maybe uh, you just need to touch base with mentor Trish to make sure we can get them in the room. I could see on our live feed that she is there. Well, while we're waiting, uh, they have code, been holding on. A, to, I'm sorry. Go ahead. They have been holding on to the trophy, which is a Stanley cup style trophy. Uh, mentor Trish circled around to pick that up from them. And we'll have their name plate added to the side, uh, commemorating their win. And then Whoever takes the prize today will have that dropped off to them sometime shortly. <laughs> you know, we talked at the beginning about uh, the Syosset Code Dynasty. If uh, we currently check on the leaderboard, and again, plenty of time, a lot of stuff to happen. Uh, but uh, three of the four spots are dominated by the uh, by the Sio Code Dynasty. All right, we have. The Monster Mash with us. Great to see you, Coach. How are you? Oh, we have no... Your mic is off, Mentor Mashburn, or Coach Mashburn. Let me try again. How's that? We got gotcha. you. All right, excellent. We're doing great. We're feeling good. We have our team working hard behind us, as you can see, and uh, we're looking forward to a great day. I can see that uh, the team has no interest in what we're doing right now, and all <laughs> eyes are on the competition. <laughs> they were told to ignore me completely, as usual. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. Was it hard to let the trophy go? Uh, always is, but we have a nice spot waiting for it, hopefully for again this year. We have a nice little outline around where the trophy's going to go back. So uh, well, hopefully we'll have it back in pretty soon. Nice. Coach, tell so us what a little kind of bit things about have the... You and Go ahead. Good, but, uh, so tell us a little bit about the temperature in the room right now. How are the how are the uh, coders doing? Are they excited? Are they frantic? Or are they you know being the defending champions? They've been here before. Or are they? Is there a sense of calm? Tell us what's going on over there. Uh, physically, it's a little warm in here, but that's to do with the room <laughs> itself and not the kids. Uh, everyone's working very hard. I think they're very focused, but I don't see a line of panic yet. It's still so early in the competition. It's so hard to know. Uh, last year, we didn't really take off in points to the last quarter of it. So early on, we're just going to take it nice and easy and get done as many challenges as we can. Now, uh, the gate. So how'd your team react to the gate? It's a brand new feature. Tell us what the experience was like as you got through the came into the gate for the first time. I think everything was pretty clearly explained, both from me and from you. Thank you for that. Uh, it's just a nice way to get things going. It's a nice warm up exercise, and I think it helps. I don't think that we were intimidated by it. I think we sort of took that challenge and pushed forward quickly. Uh, I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't have more things like that in the future. If this is the test, I think it was a successful test. Coach, tell right. us about your uh, captain, Skater Queen. Uh, our captain is working hard right now. I was going to see if she was available. She's not, as she should be. Um, is our first female captain for the district. So we're very excited about that. She's been with the hackathon now. This is, I think, third or fourth year with the team. So she's uh, old 
experienced hand at this. Uh, she's great with all different aspects, Python, Hatch, Write Editor. She's focusing mostly on Python this year, which, you know, for the middle school, it's nice to have a few really experienced coders who can do Python, and she's one of them. We are looking for great things from her, and I'm sure she's going to do great. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Coach Mashburn. We're going to let you get back to your team. I know you've got a lot of work ahead of you, and uh, we'll see you at the end. Best of luck. Thank you so much, both of you. Good luck, Coach. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. All right. Well, we turn our attention back to the map again, and uh, yeah, we can see there is a tie at the top. We've got SIO source code, which is coming out of Southwoods. You know, one of the interesting things when we have a big district like Syosset is that they can field multiple teams, and oftentimes those teams are split across different buildings. So what we're what we're seeing here is, oh, and look at that. Just as we we're speaking, Manhattan Potatoes moves into third, tying with Grand Gamers. So this is four different districts sitting in the top four spot. Uh, as I said, that first team there is Southwoods coming out of Syosset Southwoods Middle School. The uh, the next one that you're seeing on there is Mineola, Manhaxit Potatoes or Potatoes. We didn't get that cleared up, did we? Yeah, we should have. And uh, Grand Ave Gamers. So strong out of the competition here. Um, we do still have one team that has not cleared the gate. So as a reminder, in just a couple minutes here, if the gate is not cleared or one minute, I guess, if the gate has not been cleared, then we will push that team through the gate. Uh, you know, this was a challenge. It was brand new. I think next year we'll have some uh, more uh, preparation for it. It'll be interesting to hear how each team reacted to seeing that gate for the first time because it wasn't just pure coding. It had to do a lot of problem solving, a lot of logic, and uh, it's an exciting new element. So we'll see where it, where it goes. I think you'll see more of it in the coming competitions and the coming divisions. Well, we almost have the whole West Coast filled. Um... So the whole West Coast is filled and we have uh, almost filled. We have a couple of projects that are still left to uh, go. Uh, as we take a look at the combat log, we see some uh, some movement here. Again, uh, just looking at the leaderboard with uh, Sile Source Code in the lead uh, tied with Mineola. Uh, and as you correctly pointed out, the Manhacks and Potatoes, they've been here before. They know what they're doing. Uh, clearly, they moved up the board. Um, and then... Down a little bit on the board, we see the pythons uh, and the pythons uh, keep leapfrogging each other. So um, I, you know, feel intra intra district competition is probably more fierce than uh, you know out of district competition. So a lot of stuff going on. We almost have the entire East Coast filled as well. Uh, with some of those disputed territories on the any territories, which we expect uh, to be fierce battles all day. The Rams just pulled a, a yep. big win. Looks like we do have, uh, I was just going to say, we've got Beth Page just took a territory and it was an unoccupied territory. So they've been working on that one for a while. And then, yeah, we've got the West Hempstead Rams just defeated a, uh, I think that's one of the grand, no, that's uh, Merrick Ave Middle School team. One of uh, Papa Stiggs' teams going on over there who we will uh, be jumping into that room shortly too. You know, in when we first ran the this uh, these couple of events, we we had these live, and it was easy to field because we had about ten teams competing. As I mentioned, now you can see in this event there's nineteen. So I think we'll start to see the, this league evolve in the coming year with some uh, kind of bracket style events bringing us to the main game so that we can start to get back live and see some people. We had our last live event right before everything locked down. Uh, with the pandemic. So we got that one last opportunity for us to all get together. And we've been really excited to be able to continue this competition throughout the last couple of years. Really feels like there's not been a skip in the game. If anything, we got this great new live stream out of it. Got the Dom King here with us. A lot of fun. Tons of fun. So uh, if I take a look at this map here, we've got the Manhex at Potatoes seem like they are sitting on that on West Coast pretty heavy. On the move. Just open on that territory more. So we still have um, one of the hatch territories open. We have a web development uh, territory down towards the south. <clears throat> Another hatch up north. Um, so we have some some cool uh, projects still yet to be done. I'm interested to see who goes after 
that bottom web development territory because right now there's a that's a, a wide open territory looks like it's in a good spot and it's uh looks like it's going to be tough real estate yeah i think so uh I should mention also, as the as you can see these banners streaming across the bottom, we did uh, release this as a opportunity for teams a few weeks ago, where they could start to work together as a team and work on some of how they wanted to represent themselves. We are going to be announcing the winner of this banner competition at the end, uh, when the map closes and all of the submissions are you know, stopped, then it'll still take a little while for our judges to finalize everything at the very end. And during that time, we'll take a time to give the prizes award for best banner, best team logo, and the best submitted capital defense project, which I have to tell you was extremely hard. We will be sharing some links out to show you who the top CDP projects were and uh, the winner itself so that everybody can take a look at what it took to win this capital defense. The creativity, the storytelling, the artwork, the thought, the time, the process, the code, all over the top. I, tell, the, I think people would have a really hard time believing the age group that this that these projects came out of. Yeah, I, I agree. And you could see some of it. Hey, just to call out too, there's a lot of great sportsmanship going on on the um, on the wall, right? So we've had a lot of people encouraging each other. Uh, and again, while it's a competition, everybody's in the uh, everybody's in the spirit of supporting each other, which I think is one of the the true gifts of the hackathon here. Um, Such a good point, Dom King. Such a good point. Yeah, got some good good stuff going. Uh, I saw that. So I saw the web development territory. Somebody took a shot at it. It doesn't look like it uh, was claimed. Um, yeah, these uh, our mentor team is uh, very skilled at this. We've been judging a lot, and you know, we the way that our program works, we offer schools a lot of support by having a virtual mentor team in the background that can give custom feedback to each student who's submitting project work. The last uh, award period that we had for our mentors, which the way that it works is we, you know, we take a look at all the overall time commitment and skill level that was required to get through all of this challenge work. We brought in over 40,000 challenge submissions. Uh, <laughs> so that, that's a lot to get through. Those are each one of those challenge submissions is viewed by a set of human eyes where we take the time to mentor these students forward. Um, and we're happy to say that we have so many students here learning on the platform. There's nothing else like it. Nice selfie. Threw that in there. Let's going out on, again, follow us on uh, social media. Our hashtag is CodeConquest2022. Uh, it does look like the web development territory uh, down towards the south was claimed. Um, so I had a feeling that that was going to go. Um, so it looked at, good to see that happening as well. I mean, you know, when we see these events, we have, uh, there'll be a lot of teams who are practicing and running uh, micro events. We have 30 different events all already booked and scheduled between now and the next hackathons coming in May. Um, we have a really uh, awesome program for teachers that allows them to book time with some of our mentor team. And they're doing that regularly uh, through all different types of uh if it's general hackathon Q&A sessions, skill development, learning, going deeper into Hatch or the Scratch programming language, going deeper into Python, really just helping to support teachers. It's hard to stay on in front of not only the demand that we see from the young students, but the ever-changing landscape of technology and coding in general. So to have a team of experts that are actively studying computer science, up to date on all of the most current language changes and um, new new tools that are available is really, really important. We have kids on this island who are learning with actual developers who get to interact with them, who get to be part of the conversation. Uh, and it you can see how the output that that has right now in an event like today. Yeah, that is yes. so exciting. We, we even see it in other events. We had the Long Island Science and Engineering Fair take place and saw so many of our student mentors and now official mentors winning awards. I mean, it's just exciting to see how these skills at self-leading start to manifest in other areas. 
not just about coding. Code is going to run the world. So what, how are you going to apply it? And also, as you can see on the map, all teams have now successfully bypassed the auto gate and are on the on the map with six points at or five points, I guess, from the uh, from the auto gate, one point from their capital. So six points minimum. And the map is evolving. Yeah. And, uh, you know, great point that uh, this coming up uh, Monday and Tuesday is uh, the robotics. So big robotics event. I know a lot of uh, the students that are competing today are going to be competing in that as well. Um, so coding is so important uh, and you're getting to see it and you're going to get to see some of the practical uses on Monday uh, at the robotics challenge. So uh, real excited about that. Um, and we just see some uh, movement on the coast again. So, uh, Malora, why? how could somebody lose uh, what we, we see here two territories in on the West Coast that are no longer uh, taken. What happened there? Oops, I always got forget that tricky mute button there. Yeah, so I mean, we basically have what you're seeing is those territories get attacked and and the judges have to take a look at a lot of different elements with whatever whatever the defending project was to see if this attacking project really is better. And sometimes, you know, it comes down to things like, did they download this image from the internet or did they authentically use the art to create this image? It could be the storytelling. It could be a sense of humor in there. It could be just really evaluating the complexity of the code. And sometimes what we look for is the efficiency of the code. Uh, and this is something we're teaching to our young beginners all the time. You can write a program that might take a hundred lines of code, but if you can do that same program have that same outcome written in like 20 lines of code it's going to be much more efficient it's going to run smoother it's going to be faster it's going to allow you to build more complexity and that's the type of skills we're trying to instill into these students as they are learning they start off writing a lot of clunky code and it gets cleaner and cleaner and cleaner as they try to optimize uh, so we'll definitely going to see a lot of critical detail coming out of the judges and they have to make hard decisions. They are working in teams behind the scene. They have a certain amount of territories that they've been uh, training for judging, that they have worked with our lead team on how to accurately judge what is the criteria we're looking for, what makes a team a winning team over another. Um, well, while we're here, let's take a quick minute. We're going to jump out to our next district interview before we come back in and visit another team. So this interview was done with the brand new admin team at East Williston. We have Dr. Danielle Gately, who is the new superintendent of East Williston School District, along with her assistant soup. Uh, sorry, let me not abbreviate that. Assistant Superintendent Ed Kamnetzer, uh, who has worked with us for many, many years, and we're excited to have had the opportunity to go and talk to them as they are about to lead East Williston into a really exciting development time as a district. Uh, so here we go. Let's go take a look and see what East Williston has to say. It's great to be here. We're in East Williston. Thank you so much for having us. Our pleasure. You know, when you talk about East Williston, uh, it's all about student empowerment, uh, you know, putting a voice to the choices, some people say. Uh, can you tell us a bit about how the district uses technology to create more opportunities for choice? Sure. So everything we do here in this district is about students. And I like to always say learning before teaching. So whatever students need, uh, that's what we do. And we have basically put a lot of money into subscriptions that provide students opportunities to learn on personalized paths, as well as creation tools more than consumption tools. So we have a lot of opportunities for students to choose their own learning. So if we have a task for students to complete, they choose what tools speak to them. And, and we really believe in that uh, mindset. So everything we do in terms of making these decisions of what to purchase, what partners to partner with, it's all about what will give students voice in their learning because it's all about them. I love that you use the idea of creation over consumption because I think that there's a huge differentiator and not a lot of people make that. Can you give me one example? At the middle school innovation lab, when you walk in that space, kids are coding on Kiddo Yo in the corner, 
kids are uh, creating designs on Tinkercad to print on 3D printers, students using 3D pens. There are kids building Kiva block structures and measuring the engineering behind those. So it's all about kids. When you walk in those spaces, everything's hands-on. Kids choose that, uh, that path and they fail forward, you know, and that's part of the mindset here. So, you know, talking about what's happening in the classroom and what's happening in our world today, everything is changing so quickly, and it seems like the education landscape is changing just as quickly with it. Are there, have you identified some core skills that you really want all students of the district to leave here with when they graduate? We want students to be problem solvers, and you know, we want to develop kids who are thinkers, uh, whether they're in kindergarten or 11th grade or 12th grade. When they leave here eventually, at whatever point that is, we want them to think deeply about whatever situation they're in. And I think shame on us as an educational institution if we don't take what's happened to us for the last three years and try to learn from it and find the opportunities that have been presented to us as an educational institution to change, to be flexible, to help our kids develop that flexibility uh, that, that unfortunately they've been forced into. But how do we then foster that as a, a skill, a learning skill? I know that staying on top of new technologies is going to be a core component to making sure that students have the best access to education, but they also need to make sure that the teachers in the room have a really strong foundation of all of these new things coming in. So can you tell me a little bit about how you provide that to your teachers and how you make sure that they constantly have access to training and learning opportunities? So we have totally uh, disrupted the whole idea of professional learning here. Um, so in the past, uh, as in many places, you'd have to go somewhere at 3.45, sit there for two hours and learn. And we have you know, leveraged the Kiddo Yoke platform to really open up professional learning for teachers. Uh, it's anytime, anywhere, uh, as everything should be. And I think that our goal has always been to really be transparent with our learning, to show teachers and students that we will learn whenever we can and we make time for it. It's not just something that uh, has to be done. We believe in it. It's not secondary to anything we do. Uh, and it keeps us really on top of everything. Now, speaking of the hackathons, you have several teams coming in this year. Are you seeing prep already? So we have 39 students who are trying out uh, next week for 16 spots, two teams. Wow. Uh, Impressive. Yeah, we have a two-hour uh, dash, skill dash uh, planned to start in the top 16 of those students. Uh, it's going to be tough because the, you know, the, the other 22 kids are great coders, will be difficult, but as you know with the hackathon, the skill set of coding is of course important, but it's also the ability to, to work under pressure. How's the development been now that you, so uh, how important and how key is that, the development of the team, so now that you're gonna have you know two uh, down in the junior division, and then you'll have one up in the high school division. We have seen such an increase in the skills that students are bringing to the table at the high school. So while students right now in fifth grade are, are coding in the Python language, we didn't see that until we adopted the Kill Your program. So there is that thirst when students leave Willits Road to jump onto the high school hackathon. And I think that's why this year it was an immediate, yes, we're doing it at the high school because the kids now coming from Willits Road you know, are looking for that, that experience. So how is East Wolves thing going to do in the hackathon this year? I'm excited. I'm, I'm I got space for the trophy online. <laughs> the show. Dusted it off already? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, mean, oh, I like it. I I'm like pumped. It. I, think, I like that. I think manifest it. Very well. You got to manifest it. Well, I'd like to offer some congratulations. You guys are the new lead team for the East Wilson <laughs> District, which is really cool. Thank you. Thank you. What's the big What's the big goal for the next year? Do you have a big goal? I, I mean, I think personally, just to, you know, we kind of talk about the new normal. I, I, I don't like that term because it, it makes us feel that we're satisfied with status quo. And I never want us to feel like good enough is good enough. And how can we keep pushing each other and supporting each other and, and doing that in such a way that feels positive so that, you know, folks want to come to work every day. This is, this is the greatest job in the world. And we've taken a beating over the last couple of years. And, I think we got to get back to that. Why did we do this in the first place? And if we could reestablish that as the new normal, then I think that's a better way to, to come to the work, come to work next year. I think that uh, you know they say that 
great schools start with great leadership, and I think uh, East Williston's in for some really great leadership and continue to be a great school. Appreciate it. We're very excited to see you guys here. We have a great team, so we're very lucky. From East Williston, Matt and Melora, Code Conquest 2022. Okay, we're back. Uh, it was what a great experience getting a chance to speak with uh, Dr. Gately and uh, Mr. Kamitzer, Kamitzer uh, one of my good friends, a great guy, and uh, it was truly a great experience talking to them. Um, don't forget, follow us, Code Conquest 2022. Just give you a quick heads up. So on the leaderboard right now, uh, SIO source code is uh, in the lead, followed by the H. HBT Pythons, and then the Grand Gamers with the HBT Pythons right behind them. So plenty of time left, a lot of people, um, really a log jam there in the third hole with uh, eight points each. Yeah, I mean, just when you think you know what's going on with this map, you come back and you take a look and and right now that map's looking a lot pink, which means that we've still got Southwood sitting up there. Um, they're about three territories ahead at the moment, but uh, you know, there's so many attacks going on. Nobody's attacking any of the territories they are sitting on, however. So that's something to kind of watch for. You can tell who's under attack. Uh, we've got, you know, Mineola has two territories they're holding on to right there, but they are under attack. And it looks like we've got some uh some attacks waged against the Manhasset team sitting on the side. So, you know, we really don't know if teams are aiming for the projects, aiming for the win, aiming to knock out another team, you know, make sure that the champs don't take it, something like that. All right. So uh, let's, if we could zoom back out here, I'll take another look at our, our board here and see. So we've got a lot of people trying to take these territories. We've got the last three attacks here were defended. And the, well, let me say the last four attacks were defended. That means those are some strong projects sitting on there. So we've got Hop Hog Eagles came on the map. Looks like no mercy for them. Syos, it's immediately trying to knock them back off the map. And you could tell it's Syosset because uh, of the attack. They, it could only be Syosset. There's nobody else boarding. Oh, that's not true. I take that back. They're coming from the capitals. Anybody could be attacking. Um, well, that looks like they successfully def defended and um, perhaps took another territory. Yep. So, okay. So don't count out Hawpaw because of their uh, later arrival onto the map. And we say there's a lot of strategy being played out here. We don't really know what's going on until we see it at the end. Looks like uh, Sio Source Code took a territory. They took one of those vacant interior territories that we haven't seen touched yet. That's a big um, move. And then, yeah, that is a big move. But again, our defenders are holding tight. Kings Park holding on to their territory, not letting go. Merrick Ave, not letting go. Sio Code, not letting Grand Grand Gamers take it. It and looks like Manhattan. the potatoes are on the move too. So the potatoes yep. uh, sitting in tied for second place right now. They're uh, they're still holding strong. And now we've seen uh, five straight uh, defense defensive uh, wins here. So interesting for sure. Indeed. All right, who are we going to next? All right, so we have, uh, we're dropping in to see another team. So we are going to drop into Eastport South Manor Junior Team. This is led by Coach Goslin. And let's uh, see if we can get a temperature check for what's going on in the room. Hey, Coach Goslin, how's hey, it going buddy. over here at Eastport South Manor? Doing good, doing good. Which, which yeah, so. Uh, to emerge onto the, uh, onto the territory there. Nice. How did your uh, team take on the gate? Were they shocked by it? Were they able to adapt to the new game feature? No, I think they adapted pretty quickly, pretty well. They they got right after it as soon as it came out. So nice. So uh, now. The Eastport South Manor junior team has to occupy the same hall spaces as the senior team, uh, which how how does that play out? Do they are they inspired by the trophy that your senior team is holding on to? I mean, there's a lot of I'm sure a lot of eyes on your team knowing that you have the current Long Island champions as your senior division. Yeah, yeah, definitely inspired. Um, uh, we have uh, some of our high school uh, teammates here that, that uh, were showing up to the meetings and, and uh, kind of helping them out too. So, uh, yeah, inspiration definitely is definitely there, I think. 
Nice. A little mentoring from within. Yeah. Coach, how, how much has your program evolved? Uh, again, with the championship team now, um, how much has your program developed over the, uh, the time period from when you first started uh, to where you are now? Uh, well, I've only been doing it for a couple of years. Um, so I don't think we, I think we've all been doing it for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, slowly so, so we're trying to you know, obviously build, you know, get more people involved, especially at the middle school level, uh, get some more kids involved with the programming. So um, hopefully we'll see more and more kids involved uh, coming from middle school to the high school. We can uh, build, you know, build the program. Talk to us about Definitely. the team spirit going on right now. Uh, these kids are related. Uh, they're, they're, they're enjoying this a lot. So, um, they didn't know what to expect in the beginning. A lot of these are newcomers. I have one veteran on the team, and the rest of them are pretty much newcomers. So they didn't know what to expect, but I think, I think they're enjoying it a lot. Nice. Well, the room sounds exactly how it should. Lots of collaboration, <laughs> lots of energy. So we're not going to keep you any longer. We just wanted to jump in, wish you all the best of luck. Have at it, Eastport South Manor. Look forward right. to seeing how you guys finish up. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah, a lot of pressure there when you've got a the senior team holding on to that trophy there. It's good It's good to see that they're able to pull in some uh, mentoring. Whoa, as we come back, it looks like Mineola has choked up an entire part of the map. You are not getting from one side or the other unless you're going through Mineola. Oh, no sooner do I say that, and Sias, it makes it through the edge. Uh, yeah, interesting that, that strategy, was, uh... though, you know. Yeah, it's a it's a great it's a great point. More, you know, you you get to a point and you dominate one section of the map, um, then everybody has to start playing their own version of, uh, you know, their it's offense, but it's really defense because it's they have to go after your stuff. Uh, so you can see Miniola is going to dig in there, uh, and I expect them to be uh, tough down the stretch. Once again, I'm going to point out that the Manhattan, the Potatoes, they are on the move. Uh, now they hold second place all by themselves. Uh, Sio Source Code uh, dominating kind of the north, right? So we've seen the entire coast now, and the west coast is entirely taken. The entire east coast is taken. Uh, I believe the entire east coast is taken. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we're seeing a lot of movement now. Um, Sio Source Code moving. Uh, now they're moving east, and they're marching on from the sea here. Uh, very exciting. I think that uh, the Aztec warriors who inspired this map, I think, would be very, very proud. I agree. And it's probably worth pointing out right now that uh, the Hopog Code and Eagles, who were late through the auto gate, have uh, changed the trajectory of their team rather quickly since getting to the mainland. Yeah, good, great point, Devin. You know, we, we talked about that when uh, it, I'm sure it was nerve wracking, but obviously it was, as we said, it's far from over. And uh, they, they're making their move now, too. So everybody's on the move. A lot of stuff. There is still plenty, plenty of time, uh, just under two hours left. Um, so they're, they're, we're going to see this change uh, several times. I don't think we've ever had anybody go wire to wire. So um, really just exciting stuff here. Yeah. And, and you know, we, we talked about this before, but those in the final 30 minutes of this competition, the capitals can be attacked. So if you do not have a territory on the main map, then any other team can start attacking your capital. So teams were allowed to build capital defense projects starting on Tuesday when we revealed the theme of uh, all of the teams I would imagine are building more than one because in that final event, if you can start taking over another territory, you have to do it with a unique project. No project can be used to hold any two territories or capitals. Every project that you see on here has to be unique. You know, one of the other things that's interesting uh, about a map play like this is that like Matt mentioned, right now we're seeing Southwoods at the very top. Guarantee we're going to see this map flip up and down and move up and down. And teams that we thought were out of the running will be shooting up towards the top and vice versa. So you want to make sure that in those rooms, this is way too early to think you're not going to win. Way too early. The, those last couple of minutes as those judgments have come in, we've seen teams shoot up to the top when it didn't look like they had the win at the end. So 
that was the time to dig in, have grit. As as Dom King mentioned, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. Yeah, I, I can't stress that enough. And then, uh, look, I, I think the sleeper team that I would keep an eye on is, uh, you know, Beth Page, right? I think they're very inspired by the theme. Um, we went through some of those names, right? So, um, you know, I, I could see them, uh, led by their captain, uh, Johnson, be able to make some moves uh, inspired by the Aztec warriors of the past. Um, real excited uh, to watch what they're going to do. Um, and again, so, you know, Syosset is, uh, they have a methodology. They have a plan. Uh, you can see that that plan is executed. Um, there's a lot of teams left. This board will be, uh, I can't wait for the last 10 minutes because it's just an absolute frantic sprint to the end. But right now, everybody's got to stay even, stay level, go out there, keep keep battling, um, you know, you be lose nimble. on a, yeah, be nimble. If you if you get defended right, we just saw a defense right there on the battle log. If you get defended, you know, go back, take a look at your code, give it another shot. There's a lot to do here. Um, so uh, really, a lot of teams on the move. You know, let's, let's just quickly bring some attention to practice. It's it's something that gets brought up in our uh, Code Li community quite frequently. With how do you practice for hackathons? Where it's all about project skills and bringing those skills together in a teamwork environment, which for anybody who's engineering, you know, you're, you're typically working on teams. So communication becomes such a big component of this. And I think we can see that over the past year, we've had a lot of these, these skill dashes that have gone out into the schools and coaches have organized opportunities for the students to get familiar with more than just building micro skills, like is typically the case through some of our badging uh, learning pathways and really trying to stack skills together that these kids can approach at their own speed. How do we get them experience building teamwork skills and how do we bring that together so that fully, fully formed projects are the result of that learning, which is really what we're aiming at all the time. And I think that uh, we're seeing some of the payoff here. I know that some of these coaches are organizing their own little hackathons, mini hackathons in the classroom to prepare these students. I know uh, we've talked to Mashburn, he's big into that and it's shown uh, some real good proficiency in getting his teams ready. A lot of these teams are familiar with each other coming right down to that last 10 minute process. They know what they're preparing for. And so throughout the year, there's a lot of opportunities for teams to either do it on their own inside the class or to access Kidoyo mentors and run skill dashes with our judges. And uh, I think that's going to be something that's going to play big into this uh, as well as it proceeds towards the end of the event. I think one of the great things about the event as well is that uh, the feeling of team spirit, right? We just brought that up with our interview with uh, a coach Goslin, you know, I think a lot of these students get an opportunity to be on a team, get to learn from one another and get to support each other. But then I think the overall, even though they're competing with each other, uh, you know, they say that iron sharpens iron, right? So you're seeing uh, skills being tested here. Uh, as you can look right now in the middle of the map, everything is under battle right now, uh, down the dead center of the Aztec Empire here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, now seems like a good time too. We're in a high pressure cooker situation, but at the end of the day, it's about what can you make. Our mentors are really good at spotting things that you did not make. Uh, so if you are submitting a project, it was not your project, you will get warned. After the warning, you will start losing points if you try to submit a project that is not yours. So please, again, be authentic. Uh, have some self-respect for your team and your teammates and make sure that the work that you are submitting is your work and the work that you alone created. Okay, so with that said, we are excited to drop into another team. Now, this is going to be an interesting scenario because we're dropping into a school district and they have recreated a mini hackathon environment happening in there because we have multiple schools coming together for the Belmore Merrick School District. We have Merrick Ave Middle School teams led by Papa Stiggs as they know him or Dan Stiglitz. And we have the Grand Avenue teams led by Michelle Biancardo or Tech Girl. And uh, so we're, we're going to jump in. We're going to see the whole room. There's four teams in one room. So I expect it's going to be a lot 
of energy, but let's go ahead and bring in Coach Biancardo and Coach Papa Stiggs and see if we can get a temperature check on the Belmore Merrick rooms. What's going on at Belmore Merrick? Okay, they're not here yet. But I'm we don't know I'm what's excited. going on. The, my, my first question is going to be, uh, like, do you have to referee? Uh, do you have to referee them, uh, not only coach, but be the referee in this case, because you have, uh, so with four teams in one room, uh, I cannot imagine the noise or the chaos. I can't wait to hear them get unmuted as they just entered, uh, the playing field here. Uh, so let's hear what's going on in, uh, Belmore Merrick. Uh, that's, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Can hear the kids. What's up coach? How we doing? Doing pretty well over here. We have uh, kind of made our own little event out of it. We have four teams competing. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so you guys came out of the gate strong. One of the first teams to come through that gate. Tell us a little bit about what was going on and what the teams thought of seeing this new feature. Um, Ms. Ricardo's team came out of the gate really fast. We actually got to have a, a four-way a four hackathon a couple weeks ago as a nice practice, and their eighth grade team was, um, I don't know, they were fantastic. And they were they were the quickest out of the gate, and then it's just been kind of a lot of teamwork, kids jotting things down, one solving one question. They kind of broke it up, which was a nice way to see how they could, you know, problem solve that side of things. Yeah, I think our team. Our team had the approach more of um, I think two or three of them were answering the questions to get to the gate, and the rest of them were um, starting to look at the other territories and um, have an eye on the future. But I was surprised at the difficulty myself looking over their shoulders. Um, yeah, they were good questions. Better. They had some loose leaf out, they were doing some math. You know, it just seemed like it wasn't as easy as. I had initially yes. anticipated. I, I need to know. Yeah, we uh, we have to really raise the bar when it comes to this group of students. And I was saying before that I, I think a lot of people would find it extremely shocking to see the ages and see the, the actual students who are solving these problems and creating these projects. There's constantly fantastic stuff coming out of the Belmore Merrick School District. So, I mean, I'm glad to see they made it through quick, but I'm also glad to hear it was challenging. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I got to ask, right? So first off, is it, is it total chaos having four teams in the same room? Um, it, you guys look like you're working collaboratively. It doesn't look like there's a, a real rivalry there, but is there a rivalry? Oops. If we can mute the volume of the live stream, that would be great. Whoever's playing the live stream should mute. Coach, did you guys hear, uh, did you hear that question? All right, so we're having some uh, live stream, uh, you know, it's the benefit of doing this live. You get to, uh, you get to see some of the stuff in the background. Um, interested to hear the coach's reaction to this. Um, so coaches, uh, I'm not sure if you're listening to the Zoom or the stream. The stream is going to be delayed, so we really have to have you mute the stream and pay attention to just our Zoom call. Nope. All right. Well, we're going to pop out of that, uh, Mentor Doug. That's not really working so well. So uh, better yet, better luck next time. But if we can go ahead and uh, push that one back out. All right. So we're back to the map. Uh, not a lot of changes on the on the leaderboard, other than the fact that somehow we've got the HMS Code and Eagle screaming up from the bottom, uh, finding their way into the top three, and may, even nudging Mineola down one spot. Uh, again, right now, this is just the beginning, but it does look like Southwoods is creating a decent lead for themselves. Can they hold it is the question. Are they showing all their cards at the beginning? Well, and uh, it's funny because we talked about the West Coast being dominated uh, originally by uh, the SIO source code. Uh, looks like the potatoes are on the move there. The potatoes have got almost the, uh, they've got the majority of the West Coast territories. Um, so they're, they're doing well. Um, and again, it's so tight. Uh, the, to the top is so tight. SIO's pulling away a little bit, though. They've got a five point lead now, pretty impressive. Um, the potatoes right behind them. And then the, to your point, as we told everybody at the beginning, the screaming, the coding eagles uh, are on the move, uh, grabbing the uh, a big piece of the northern territories of the Aztec Empire here. 
Yeah, we're and we're starting to see some of those center territories get taken. There's only six available territories left right in that center quadrant. And out of those six territories, now though none of those territories can be taken unless you're bordering them. Now that the coastal territories were different because everybody was bordering the coastal territories from their capital. So they can constantly attack them. Once you get into that center corridor, if you're not bordering, you can't attack. So this is a big deal to take those. They're hard to lose once once they're taken. Yeah, and we look, as we look again, we're, uh, don't forget to follow us on social media. Use our hashtag, CodeConquest2022. Uh, I'm putting a live uh, out on Twitter right now. Uh, I'm putting out the uh, current leaderboard. So if you get a chance, give us a follow. Um, yeah, again, defense, uh, they say defense wins championships. We're looking at uh, four successful defenses. Usually when I say that, uh, the next one is always a win. So we'll... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It looks like uh, we've got, it's likely Hop Hog uh, putting a, an attack on that upper territory there on the right hand side. That is a scratch hatch territory called the 13 levels of heaven, uh, talking about the various levels for the Aztecs to get through. This is the Uza territory. And again, it is a scratch project and it is currently under attack. So that could be a big win for Hop Hog because there is nobody else bordering that territory but them. So here's where we're going to see strategy. I've heard that some teams have brought in the game of risk to have their students actually play risk just to understand how to have a different strategy approach when you're playing a map. There's so many elements that are challenging these young coders right now. It's not just pure code. It's not just pure logic. It's creativity. It's storytelling. It's the artwork going into it. It's the strategy and, and the logic that came into it from the initial quizzes. I mean, there's just the teamwork. Can't say enough about teamwork here. It, you can't win if you're not going if your whole team's not going to work together. There's no way to win if it's there's no I in this experience. Well, you know what, I, and I, I think that's a uh, a great point. And one of the things you had said about bringing in risk, right? So risk, uh, you know, historic, uh, you know, Parker Brothers game. Uh, but there's people that are on these teams that might not necessarily be the strongest coders, but they're great strategy people. So you use them for to help you, you know, point out places on the map that you might want to grab. Um, we see basically almost there's only a handful now of unoccupied territories. So yeah, we'll see what's yeah, going on with that. Literally six, and we've got a couple of attacks now. That one middle territory there is it could be anybody attacking, really. It's there's three teams that are bordering it right now. So that could be coming, that attack could be coming from Manhasset, from Hop Hog, or from Syosset. So really those top three teams are vying for those inner territories right now. And I we're gonna see a fierce battle. There's still a ton of attacks happening throughout the board. Uh, you can see Harbor Fields is taking some attacks and Syosset managed to hold back. It's tough because you're in there and you're building and this is the part about being nimble. If your project doesn't win, what's plan B? If you're defending a territory with a project that you work really hard on and it's awesome and somebody comes and one-ups you, how are you going to change your project? Or do you have one up your sleeve that can now retake the territory? And that's how you have to have this flexible mind that's constantly ready to change. And the team captain is so important in helping the team decide the strategy moving forward. What are the territories right now in the middle? Um, and again, you can't see my pointer, but uh, one of the bigger territories right there, uh, one down from the north, right? That's a Python challenge. That looks like that's uh, in dispute as we speak. Um, and then there is another battle going on um, right north of that. Uh, that, I believe, is a hatch challenge. Um, so uh, a lot of stuff going here, and they're still moving. I, I'm interested... And I, I always ask this question, uh, some of the unoccupied territories, I, I never understand why the teams don't go after some of those unoccupied territories. Um, you know, oh, there you go. There's Hop yep. grabbed Hop another Hop one. Took it. So anybody who was counting them out because they were a little slow getting out of the gate, literally and figuratively, um, I think that they kind of silenced everybody on that. They're now uh, tied for second place. Yep. Yeah, you know, that... That territory you pointed out, that Python territory, is a challenging one because, number one, you know, we're talking about students who are in grades seven and eight, 
in competing in this event. That's, you know, middle school level students being asked to create a project of Python. This isn't just a turtle project. In this particular one, they're being challenged to recreate a game where it's essentially a one player playing against the computer. So they have to be able to program user input. They have to be able to program multiple players, score, the ability to win. Um, you know, this is a, a recreating an, a traditional Aztec board game called Patoli or Patui, uh, and that is what they're trying to do. So there's a lot of uh, thought process that goes into it. We're moving out of block-based programming into pure script. So, uh, you know, not a lot of teams are going to be able to go after that territory. If I could just chime in real quick, Dev here. I just want to make an administrative announcement to all teams listening. Captains, make sure your capital defense projects, your CDPs, Guarding your capital are public and viewable at all times. And the same should be true of all territories. Not only do you need to use the domain of the event competition, CCEDU, for all your app projects so the other teams can, can view it. If you use your school community, they're not going to be able to see your, your projects since those are going to be private. So it needs to be for the community that we're in for this competition. And they should be viewable at all times for the integrity of the competition. So right now there's there's a couple that are not viewable and they should be viewable, even though we don't have capital attacks enabled yet. Also, uh, make sure that you are submitting original work. If you are, we've judges have already found example of a uh, project that was not original. Teams will be issued warning for the first occurrence. After that, you will lose a point and any further Actions of that type will, will result in team disqualification. So make sure you're using original work. Judges are pretty good at finding plagiarism and copy projects online. We've got multiple tools at our disposal. All right, that's it. The uh, I can tell you this, the board, I'm looking at the uh, public wall and it's eerily quiet. So uh, no smack talk going on today. Um, we're also, again, going to post that. Please use original work. Uh, last thing we want to do is uh, have to disqualify any teams. Um, we want everybody to uh, do their best. It's better to uh, lose with integrity than win without honor. So please uh, focus on that. Please make sure you're being honest. Uh, we're all in this together. All right, more. give us an update on the board. All right. So, wow, things are, it looks like the judges are uh, moving towards that Python judgment. Uh, you know, we have this queue forming. So what happens is as projects are submitted, they come in in a stacked order. If our judges are judging them across that stack, then the teams that have taken that one uh, who submitted first actually have their results posted first so that we always have this integrity of gameplay. Um, you know, we're still seeing Syosset sitting up there, keep taking those those leads. So now seems like as good a time as any. We had the privilege of visiting Syosset schools uh, this past couple of weeks. We did a, a few interviews. One we're going to feature during our upper elementary division um, and one we're going to feature now. So this interview is with Dr. Tom Rogers and Dr. Tom Rogers has is at the helm as the superintendent of Syosset School District. He is also supported by Dr. Teresa Curry, who will be featured in our next video as the she is the assistant superintendent at Syosset. It. Uh, but let's take a look inside and hear from the leadership here, who is obviously creating this incredible environment for their students to learn and thrive within. So let's take it away, Syasa and Dr. Tom Rogers. Be here at Syasa School. We're with Dr. Tom Rogers, Superintendent. Dr. Rogers, in 2022, it's clear that coding and computer science education need to increase in schools in order to help graduating students meet opportunity with skills. Can you tell us about some of the SIASA coding goals? Sure. Um, we're excited about coding here in SIASA and we've incorporated it into our curriculum from literally our youngest learners through uh, our seniors. And the reason is it's less about any one computer language that a student might learn and more about understanding how to use processes and algorithms to solve problems. That ability to be fluent in algorithmic thinking, no matter what the language is, even if it's a simple coding language or a complex coding language, 
it's the algorithmic thinking that we want. You've, uh, you, you mentioned that you have K through 12 coding experiences and for students. Um, do you feel a demand increase coming from your students, teachers, community for more computer science and coding? I do. And what's interesting is if you say to somebody, this is what you need to be successful in the future, they're going to look at you and say, oh, this is instructional broccoli. Mm -hmm. But if they find something that's fun to do, the demand supplies itself. So what we've tried to do is identify ways for kids to do coding that they just simply find to be fun. And then the skill that they bring along, this ability to think in algorithms, just comes along for the ride. So we're finding ways for them, them to pursue what they're already enjoying without it seeming like instructional broccoli. I, I always say that the best way to get kids engaged is to make it feel like they're playing a game. And we would say that computer science can be Trojan horsed in through coding because of what you're saying. It's they like it, and if they they like it, they're motivated. So that's excellent, and it really do see that shine through here at Syosset District. It's it's really impressive to see how engaged the students are. And I think with a lot of the coding projects, there's short cycle to feedback, right? So you learn a skill, you're able to incorporate it quickly, and you're able to see the results right away. And so it's just very rewarding to get that instant feedback of getting better. You know, it's been a tough two years for teachers and administrators. Um, how has the pandemic helped or hindered your uh, coding initiatives? So early in the pandemic, uh, before we became fluent at so many of these distance learning tools, we were working very hard to try and find things that could translate from the physical environment into this online environment. And one of the first uh, parts of the curriculum to make the leap was coding, because coding was already something that students were doing with a screen and a keyboard and a mouse. And so those were the tools that they had available to them. And in some ways, whether they were all physically together in a room doing coding or they were all in a virtual room together doing coding, from what was going on with the student, very little bit of a, uh, of a difference. So it was actually one of the things that made the translation into the online environment earliest. And then since then, obviously it's blossomed. Well, I will say that the Syosset students come onto the OYO class platform with a serious sense of energy. It's competitive, it's aggressive, we see it in their challenge submissions. We see it in the way that they communicate with each other, build bonds, encourage one another in an X Games type of a competitive nature. And I, I love seeing that. What is driving that here, do you think, at SIAS? Is this coming from the students, from the faculty? Where is it coming from? I think in some ways it's coming from their own earlier success. Uh, we've been very fortunate to enjoy a lot of success in previous hackathons. Yes. And I think Every generation of new students wants to carry on that tradition of success that their older peers uh, were modeled and trailblazed. And so I, I think they have a sense that we have a good program here that leads them to a place where they have some skills and they might be successful. And, uh, you know, this is their opportunity to compete doing the thing that they love. Can you talk a little bit about how proud you are of the fact that just the amazing growth that you've seen in the program here? Well, I'm certainly proud of the growth, but the reason why we've grown is because the teachers have done an amazing job of making this relevant and fun for kids. And so the growth is the byproduct of that, but it's really the thoughtfulness and creativity that they've shown and how they've put this together so that it is, it's just a kid magnet program. Thanks, Dr. Rogers, for having us. Matt Malore, Code Conquest 2022. And we're back. Uh, thanks to Dr. Rogers for having us up there. Uh, great time, and I can't wait to uh, show our interview uh, in the next hackathon uh, with the rest of Syosis administrator administration. All right, Malore, the, the board is tightening up tightening up. So the commanding lead by uh, the SIO source code is uh, slowly dwindling. Uh, do you want to talk about that? 
Yeah, it looks like what we're seeing is hop hog is trying to take over some more of these coastal territories. So we've got hop hog has moved into second place. Again, you know, you just, you never get discouraged at the beginning of this game because it's all about the endurance you have, how you can continually strategize and manage your team's capabilities. So, oh, there's another, there's a big win down there. We are, uh, <laughs> seeing Sio source code get taken over by which team is that i cannot really see who i'm looking at down there uh that's the falcon force i believe uh oh, locust valley win. yeah and it's funny uh, once again i was literally just about to say defense wins championships and of course uh locust valley uh proves you know goes on the offensive and, and grabs the territory so uh it's just exciting to watch right now. Everybody is on the move. Um, and, and again, nobody is out of it. That's the no. one thing. There's only a handful of territories. Uh, most people are within striking distance of, of grabbing some of those territories. Um, let's just hit on a couple of the open, um, some of the open challenges. Yeah, yeah. We've still got four open challenges that have not been taken over. And, we, you know, it we, we're not really sure how that's going to play out. Will they go after those territories? Sometimes there are territories that do not get claimed. And like I said, some of our tougher, longer built projects sent, tend to occupy that middle territory zone. They're harder to get to. They're harder to steal once someone owns them. So there's you know, some benefit gameplay to going after those. Uh, you know, The other thing I think I, I you know, want to say to all the teams who are out there right now Last year, what we saw at the end of this was a lot of great commentary coming out of the kids. Even if you don't win, what you're seeing is what's capable, what you're capable of at this age range. So you can look at the other students' projects. You can see what they're building and know that these kids are putting in the uh, extra time. Dev talked about practice. Well, some of uh, what we see is when the teams really start to teach each other to share their skills, to keep pushing each other up, they become the most successful because it's not about waiting to be taught what to do in this hackathon. You need to know how to act on your feet. You need to know how to move fast, how to solve problems, how to innovate. And you're only going to do that if you help each other build your own skills. This is one of those subjects where you can't look to someone to give to you. You have to put in the time, you have to practice, you have to build. And I think what we're seeing right now is the result of that. Uh, oh, it looks like we just got Mineola took a team or took a territory. And we have Manhaxis is has defended a territory. So constant movement, you know, it's so tight right there. At the, I mean, honestly, it's there's not a lot of point spread. Even if you look at like the seven pointer teams, so they're only seven points away. Those that could change so many times in the next hour. And we've well, we've reached the midpoint. Uh, the map will. Stop for submissions at 12.15. We got started 15 minutes later than we expected. So it will close at 12.15. That means end of submissions. And then we'll, we'll announce our prize winners from the other categories while we're waiting to see who takes that territory at the end. And that's the most intense time because there's nothing else you can do. You just yeah, have you to have sit to, and wait. You have to do. You have to do it. So right now, just uh, still open, right? We have, uh, we have the top territory uh, all the way to the immediate north. That's open. That's an uh, that's an any project, right? So that's kind of the the Kyoyo wild card. Um, that is uh, really surrounded by Hop Hog right now with um, with Sio source code right on, on their tail there, uh, right below that is a Python project. And then right, uh, below that, uh, is a hatch. So it's, uh, you know, varying skill sets available. Uh, the map is, uh, and I love seeing the map filled and we're, we're seeing, uh, a battle, uh, right now there's a battle with more than three quarters of the map going on yeah. really a uh, testament to the, uh, mentors all the work they have to do and in, in grading these codes um don't forget follow us on hashtag code conquest 2022 uh, make sure you post uh activities in your rooms and stuff we're dying to see what's going on uh but really some some great stuff going on here uh and just the just the amount of learning and teamwork uh I, everybody's a winner uh when we when we talk about stuff like that one of one of my favorite things uh as we do this 
competition is we, you know, we call out some of the, the good team uh, spirit. And again, the board is eerily quiet. The wall, not the board, sorry. The wall is eerily quiet. Uh, but just want to call out a, a couple of uh, the good sports we have here. So we got uh, Princesa the Frog from Mineola, Benny Boy, right? Um, HS 2022, who's with the uh, the Royal Waffle Wildcats, which I'm dying to know how that name came about. We got Sushi Cat. We got John from Harbor Field. Um, the average uh, voting enthusiast who's just going crazy excited. Uh, the Jolly Green Eagle. Um, you know, just everybody is so excited. The Parallel Aztec from the uh, from the Ram Fam. Um, it's real cool stuff. I, lo I love seeing the interaction with the students, uh, with each other in the schools, and the fact that everybody's working together. Yeah, I agree with you, Matt. That's one of my favorite parts of this as well. I think one of the things that's happening right now is Silas Source Code is, is learning how hard it is to separate yourself from the masses. It's hard to be up there in the lead when the entire community starts gunning for you. <laughs> Here we are, and they've been brought back into the fold a little bit. And uh, we're grouping back in there. The map is evolving. Normally, we don't see every territory fill so quickly. You know, I think including some of our high school hackathons, they, they went deep into the event without having to uh, have with, without having any of the, the territories that were empty being filled. So here we are just past the midway point. We've only got four territories left that have not been attacked, and we've got two pending attacks on those. So strategies are definitely being learned from previous years and applied this year. Much easier hey, to seize a territory when you're not you're not competing against another team. Dev, are you surprised that the any territory up all the way north is not occupied right now? I, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm a little shocked that that's not taken. You have two teams that are in position to grab that territory. Um, I'm I'm surprised with the, you know, again being kind of the wild card uh, as an any territory. Are you are you are you surprised that it's not filled? Yeah, a little bit. I think that uh, you know our our judges who have been active in creating this map are always looking to put some territories with challenges that are a little more difficult just to kind of stretch the competition. So maybe the captains have, have sized that territory up is not the best expenditure of their time. There's other places their skills are better used at. And I don't know. You know, sometimes we've got teams that are laying back too. There's, there is yeah. ample experience for them to know that in the final hour, the final 30 minutes, you can go from the bottom to the top really quickly. So, you know, they might not want to put their best work forward just yet and hold it back until it's a little closer towards the end of the competition. You know, I like, I like the way that, uh, I like the way that Lopez Valley is playing Ooh. right now. They're, they're being super, super aggressive. We are, we have a three-way tie on the map right now. We have Sio Source Code, HMS Code and Eagles, and Manhaxit Potatoes. Three-way tie sitting at the top. It's exciting. With, now, you, with Mineola just wanted, right behind them. With one. Mineola is right behind. It is exciting. And we, we're we definitely going to see this change. That's not going to be the way the leaderboard stays. Uh, we do have these two territories that are under attack now. And I think kind of going off from your question before and echoing a little bit about what Dev was saying, some of the reasoning why we wouldn't see a territory go after is the complexity of creation. It takes longer to build that. So there may be teams building for that right now, but that particular top territory is a dice rolling game and dice rolling simulations are a little bit tough. They're going to have to use list variables. Um, they're going to have to try to figure out how to simulate this constantly changing dice roll and it has a lot of components required of it we're trying to recreate a simplified version of the bull game which was very popular aztec game uh using dice so there's a lot of requirements for that and that's probably why we're seeing some uh you know slower submissions. The other two projects uh, territories are both hatch territories. Uh, one is the Sun Gods, which is asking them to uh, create a project that is basically telling the legend of the Sun Gods. So it's got to be story-based. It has to have, uh, it could have some fantasy in it, but it really does require some good art skills. And that takes time. You can't just, you know, whip it out. And these teams know if you download something versus you create something, Something the judges are going to look at that a little differently. Yeah, the other territory in there too is is uh, Aztec education. So it's asking players to 
create a scenario that would show how young uh, Aztecs went through the education. They had an education system for the common uh, boys and girls, you know, the gods, the goddesses, priests and priestesses princess and princess, whatever, had a different one. Um, but this is really trying to create a game simulating the training an Aztec uh, young person would receive. So it could be fighting training. It could be learning how to count. They had a math system, learning how their uh, petroglyphs worked or hi hieroglyphs worked. Yeah, that's a, that's a, um, what a uh, you know, a, a being a history buff, right? I love all of the history tie-ins here, you know, we've seen that on uh, some of our historic uh, code conquests in the past, and uh, this is no different. Uh, this is just a great point in history and uh, just an exciting, uh, we're seeing, you know, the evolution from the Mayans to the Aztecs, and uh, I love that we're, we're kind of honoring that tradition right now. Um, it's a lot With of fun. A little bit of a I, fantasy spin on it. Yeah, and I, I think it's fun in the fact that, too, is that you have... Uh, you know, they. I think the uh, the Aztec ancestors would be very proud of uh, of the fierce competition that's going on right now. Uh, all right, perfect. So we before we break out to this next team interview, I'm just going to point out that the defending champs, men hacks at potatoes, have just taken the lead. They have pushed themselves ahead, so that means their last attack attempt was successful, uh, and it looks like they took a territory from the pythons. So. Uh, with that said, we are going to jump in and take a moment to visit Harbor Fields. We have two teams coming in from Harbor Fields this year, so hopefully we're going to get to see both of them. Uh, these teams are being led by Coach Ahern and Coach Kar Karpinski. And if I said that wrong, I apologize. That, that happens from time to time. I'm with Karpinski. All right. So we, do we have Harbor Fields in here? We do. They're on mute. All right, let's unmute you guys, Harbor Fields. Ah, we have Jennifer Washington here too. Excellent. <laughs> hey, everyone. Yes. So Tell how's it going? going? Oh, everyone's really excited. There's a lot of good energy out there. They're working really collaboratively, um, and we're really proud of them. They're definitely improving every time they go to a hackathon, so we're really proud of them. Yeah, the hackathon has a tendency to uh, supercharge the enthusiasm for pushing skills. So, and uh, we can see that they, you guys came out of the gate pretty successfully. What was your experience of going through that as a new challenge type? That was pretty cool because I know that they were all expecting it to just be one challenge and then go. But then the fact that it was like all these different answers, it was just very cool to watch the thought process as they're, you know, trying to maneuver through this new gateway. Um, but they really, really worked together and we were really proud of how they were able to use their skills together. We now, the do you have both coach. teams in the same room? Oh, yes. We do. Both teams have, are in the same room. Both? So what's what's that like? Tell us, because uh, we didn't get to explore that with another team. Tell us what that's like having both teams in the same room. So we know that the first year we all did it in person and that really did charge the room up with the energy and then being around the other team. So it was kind of nice this year to have two teams where they felt like they could kind of kind of hear what's going on around them with the other teams and feel like they're kind of on a field trip. Nice, nice. Well, that's the intention. We're, we're hoping we can all get everybody live again together. It sure is a lot of fun to get to see everybody. Right now, we see everybody expressing their personalities through the, the alias they, they choose, the type of projects they're putting out there. And this is a tough game. I mean, we could see these attacks coming constantly. I think, if anything, you know, I wanted, I just think it's exciting that you guys have two teams coming in this year. That means that there's more and more interest and we're going to see greater and greater things coming from Harbor Fields. Um, we're hoping to get a younger team in for next year. So we'll be able to grow that as they go up through the years when they get to the middle school. So more to yeah. come from us. Yeah, yeah, super that's important. Awesome. And, and can you talk a little bit about that as far as your evolution and as far as, the, you know, advancing uh, the students? So we started with Kidoyo in um, 2018 and we had some great momentum with it. At the time I was teaching in fifth grade and I also ran the Creative Computing Club. So we, we had a great start with it. And then 
you know, unfortunately when COVID happened, you know, it slowed us down a little bit as a district, but this year, the momentum is really coming back. We have the Creative Computing Club running for grades three, four, and five. And we're actually having an in-person Kids Who Code event here in Harbor Fields next week for our elementary students to really gain capacity for our, our younger you know, younger students there. So our hope is that when they get to the middle school and they see all the coding opportunities, they get to join the Creative Computing Club here, that they're, you know, have more of a skill set behind them. Oh, excellent. Yeah, creating that farm league is crucial for the upper divisions. Yes. How, how big would a win mean to that program? If you could pull out, you could pull it out today, pull the oh, trophy, man. bring it into Harbor Fields. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, we are just happy that we're here. Um, we're a young program and we're, we're keep pushing and we're getting better every single year. We just told the kids, we're like so obsessed with their banner. And that was a win for us to, you know, like get that banner rocking and rolling. The fact that we have two teams. I mean, I just think every year we're going to get better and better. And listen, you know, you, you got to watch out for Harbor Fields. <laughs> Guys are on the move. Don't no question. Out. That's right. We yeah. got we got a lot of motivation. Awesome. Well, I think that's a, the absolute right attitude to have for all of the teams because, you know, it takes a lot of bravery to show up. You know that there's going to be some skills on this map that are going to blow your socks off. I mean, there's kids on here that can code circles around me and you still, you have to be willing to show up because the only way you're going to get better is by putting yourself to the test. Exactly. So kudos to every kid who shows up today. Honestly, everybody's a winner no matter uh -huh. what. Yeah, I'm going to go on the record that every single kid that's in this competition could code circles around me. So <laughs> I, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. All right. Well, thanks, Harbor Fields, for making time for us. We'll let you get back to your team. Good luck. There's Thank still you. plenty left to go. Go, Harbor Bye. Fields. Bye. Awesome to get to see Harbor Fields. Uh, Look, they're on the move. Uh, great program. They're building a great program. So we're going to start to see a lot of uh, of good stuff going on here. Yeah, I think like that's really important to know too. Is every year the teams change over? We're not dealing with the same group of kids in every division over and over. And this division particularly has the lowest amount of grades that can compete because it can only be grades seven and eight, where the high school has nine through twelve and the upper has four through six. So you know, smallest pool of students, but the energy level is off the charts with this group. Oh my God, we have another three-way tie. Every time I look away, I'm going to make a commentary, turn back, and we've got something exciting going on. You know, it's just to pick up on what you said there, Malar, I think the it, you can't overstate how much courage it takes to show up at a hackathon. And that doesn't change. I mean, obviously, I think we're all blown away that upper elementary kids are, are hacking in a hackathon. Here we have junior high, we got high school. All of that is surprising. You go to the university and you go into adult hackathons, and even there it takes courage to show up, to, sh to come in and maybe you don't code. Maybe you're a designer. Maybe you're somebody who does marketing, right? And you're, you're good at writing, copy. Like people show up and they, they come to collaborate and to learn and to experience what it is to be part of something like this. And you don't know what to expect. So I think for every district that, that takes the charge to be involved, to let this experience inform their students, I mean, it really is quite a testament to the courage that exists in these districts from top to bottom, at the administrative level, to the teachers, to the coaches that are taking extra time out. I mean, you really just got to celebrate what you're seeing. And sometimes it's not so easy to understand just what that takes. That I'm going to show up and I'm going to put it all on the line in three hours and see what I can do. So, I mean, to me, that's the most exciting thing that's happening right now. And as we said that, uh, guess who's back on top? So, SIO source code pulled back into the lead. Uh, the HMS Coding Eagles, who, again, got a late start, got out of the, out of the temple a little late, uh, now firmly in second place. And then we've got the Manhaxit Potatoes uh, right on their tail. So one point, two points separates uh, three through one, and only four points separates uh, four through one. So we, we've, there is plenty of time left. Uh, we're still a little bit over an hour, and we've got a lot of different uh, moves being made here. Um, and, and keep an eye on some of those teams uh, closer to the bottom because I have a feeling uh, we're going to start to see their 
when once that hour mark hits inside the hour mark, uh, I think you're going to see a lot of great stuff and you're going to get to see a lot of different things move. Yeah, I think so too. And, and, you know, I think like in this last hour, you've got kids who are going to feel a little bit of that frustration if they, if they're, they still just can't figure out how to get past a territory and they're trying really hard to get their projects submitted. But it's about that grit at the end of it. We don't quit. We have grit and we just keep going and it's okay to fail because like Dev said, and like we all know, all what matters is that you're here and that you're trying and that you're pushing your skills. And now you know what, what does it take from this year to next year? What do you need to do? What challenge work do you need to do? What courses do you need to take? How can the Kidoyo mentors help push your game forward? This is, you know, a group effort. Uh, and like Deb said too, it takes everybody, the admin of all of these districts, supporting these teams, giving the teachers the time and, and effort that it takes for them to pull their, their teams together. I, I know that there are coaches that are up at 11 o'clock at night answering questions of their teams because they care so deeply about giving the kids this, this opportunity. So honestly, to every coach, every teacher involved, every admin who made this possible. Thank you. It's awesome. And it feels like the whole entire island is just pulsing with electricity. If you're watching as another district considering coming on, bring a team. It's a ton of fun. The competition is only going to be bigger and bigger. And this is just one of those areas where we as citizens of this country, the United States, we need coders. We really desperately need more coders. There is not going to be a future that has less technology in it, only more. And it starts here with these kids. So CS departments, come get us. We've got the top of the top here on this island. That's right. And this map, I think one of the things we're seeing here is look at look at Hopog. They were late onto the map. Sometimes, uh, you know, our team is made of computer science graduates. We got master's level, undergrad level degree, certified people with skills. And this, this kind of a competition is really kind of applied computer science, right? We're, we're looking for people that can bring some of that creative computing energy that uh, it takes to be part of something like this. So maybe an algorithmic challenge is going gonna, is gonna to stifle and, and stump some of the teams that are going through something like an auto gate. And then they get out onto the territory. And here now we're asking them to show off their creative methods. It's a different story. We're seeing the, the success of this map play out right in front of our eyes with Hopog climbing up to the top, tied for first at this point, from last to first in less than half the competition. That's that's pretty cool. Yep, and just as you say it, they've tied it back up. Now we see only one vacant territory right now. It, somebody tried to launch an attack on it. The, the judges uh, turned to that attack back. So we do still have that one open territory, but there is going to be a lot of battle happening in between these territories now because now there's no place to go but against each other. Well, and the again, the any territory finally gets occupied uh, you know, big move by Sio Code to get into that territory on the uh, absolute north. Yep. So that's the dice rolling game. Uh, probably wh what I suspected was happening was it's a more intense project, required a lot more code and logic, and it took a little time to get it in there. Uh, so you know, we're going to take another moment. We have one more district interview that we would like to play. We had the opportunity to go to Kings Park and meet with Dr. Tim Egan, who is the superintendent of Kings Park School District, and his director of technology, Brian Deere, Dr. Brian Deere. And we're really excited to spend some time with them. So let's cut to that video and see what's going on at Kings Park. It's great to be here in Kings Park. Superintendent Dr. Egan and Director of Tech and Data Systems, Brian Deere. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Dr. Egan, Kings Park is a uh, excellent and very unique place. Can you tell us a little bit about the community? Sure. I've been uh, the proud educational leader here in Kings Park. It's my eighth year. Um, it's an incredibly hardworking community, and they expect us to be able to provide a globally competitive education, and a, a big piece of that is our, our coding program, uh, computer science, engineering, and all the STEM-related activities that we provide our students. Excellent. Well, it's definitely hard to miss that Kings Park has a very strong tech program, combining coding with hardware. 
So, and that really lends itself to provide a really maker education type thing, something that, that can be applied. You have really strong tech teachers. Can you tell us a little bit about your teachers who are leading this? When I came here eight years ago, we, we didn't have really a technology department. Um, and today we, we have a very high functioning department. We have a, a great leader in, in Dr. Deer. Um, we have uh, two teachers on special assignment that are integration specialists. And they're absolutely, absolutely amazing, hands-on. Um, we instituted uh, FIRST Robotics about five years ago. And then we discovered that um, we needed a feeder program into FIRST Robotics. Our team was really successful, but we needed to grow coders and kids who were willing to tinker with 3D printers and things like that. So we, we started at the high school level, but then we built backwards and we, we now have um, clubs and uh, coding, really, really K-12. So this is your fourth year competing uh, in the intra district, uh, district hackathon. Two quick questions for you. What type of energy do you think the students will bring? And then what will you two be doing on game day? So the, the hackathon is cool. Um, it, it's neat because it's, it's a team higher order thinking event. Um, and, you know, we got middle school kids trying to outsmart and outlast, um, you know, other teams across Long Island. Um, you know, I, I will be following uh, the play by play on the day of the hackathon. Um, I'll, I'll turn it over to, uh, to Dr. Deer a little bit and, and he can describe in a little bit more detail our, our involvement in the hackathon. Sure. Uh, one of the things that I love about the hackathon is that it, it really um, allows the students to work in a few different areas and they, they can find their own niche throughout the year. So students who are, are better you know, working through problems in Scratch, students who are better working in Python, web design, sprite design. Um, it, it's a really cohesive group that they, they're allowed to figure out what works for them and where they fit in. And they build that sort of team unity throughout the year. And, and then when they come down to that moment of, of actually going and competing, it's, it's the sort of environment where the students are working on their own. They're not working with any sort of coaching in that moment. And so it's really what we're trying to do as an educational institution to try to drive them to be self-independent, you know, self-sufficient uh, learners. And, uh, and work through those problems on their own. Now, you are, you're the director of technology here, and so you must see this a lot. Coding and computer science have grown tremendously over the years in, in popularity, but also in demand. How do you see that growth going forward at Kings Park in the coming years? Oh, I, I think it's gonna be exponential moving forward. I mean, the, the clear drive in the future is you know, to put more kids on this path where they have these opportunities to continue to grow and, and learn. We've been working with, um, through BOCES, we participated in the Smart Start grant through MOUSE. So we've done some computer science training this year for some of our teachers for the first time. It's the first year of a, a multi-year uh, program with that. We, uh, we rearranged part of the middle school schedule um, for the first time this year to free up uh, one of our teachers, Sam Cruz, to give him the opportunity to work with some of our students in sixth grade. Uh, all of our sixth graders now for the first time ever have a 40-minute uh, once every four days pull out with Sam to uh, to grow for the course of a quarter and, and be exposed to some of these topics for the first time. So it's something that definitely has a future and we want to continue to support that sort of program. Ah, I see. Give me more time with Mr. Cruz. That's a smart plan as you're coming into the hackathon season. Uh, S Sam Cruz is a really phenomenal teacher who has done really some inspirational things in terms of creating this environment for the kids. I've been in the classroom with him. I've been there with his club kids and you can tell they, they love him and they want to perform well for him and he creates an excellent environment. So uh, interesting to see how that impacts you guys this, this go around, smart move. Would you consider uh, turning your beard into a goatee <laughs> to give yourself an advantage? <laughs> no, so, so here, here's, here's, a, here's the deal with facial hair in my family. Well, I am the boss at work. I am clearly not the boss at home. And I have been forbidden to shave this into a goatee. So that will never happen. Okay. 
I do. I feel like you're putting yourself at a disadvantage, but that's completely up to you. <laughs> any last things you want to share, or anything you want to tell everybody about uh, what's going to we can expect out of Kings Park uh, in the hackathon? Sure. You know, it. What I love. What I love about the hackathon is it's it, it's it's a team sport. It's a team strategy event, and that's exactly what our fu- the future employers are looking for. That's that's a huge skill to be able to work successfully in, in teams. Um, and that's, and that's what we do. It's group strategy. It's group planning. Um, you know, we got super smart kids, but it's, it's the group interaction and, uh, being able to work together in a team that I think ultimately is going to put us over the top. That's the make or break. Can you work together? Can you be a team? Well, we thank you so much for having us. This is great to see you guys. Matt and Melora, Code Conquest 2022. And we are back. Laura, you want to update us on the map? Well, as expected, changes have happened again. So now we see the top two teams sitting as Men Hexit, Potatoes, and HMS Code Eagles. Uh, if you had, hadn't tuned in last year to our upper elementary division, you might not know that the Hop Hog Coden Eagles were our champions. They are the defending champions of the Upper Elementary League. So that means that some of those students likely are now on this team competing. And that's uh, that's definitely playing into what we're seeing happen here. Um, this, these are veterans. They are coming back from uh, previous competitions, as are uh, some of the other teams, I'm sure, too. Again, we're not counting at Syosset out. We're, we're not silly enough to think that they don't have a, uh, quite a few things left up their sleeves. But I also know that these other two coaches sitting in the top are fierce. You do not want to mess around with these guys. They are putting their team through the ringer right from the beginning of the school year. Well, and I would say we don't want to count anybody out because we've seen this board change several times. The fact that the uh, the Eagles have made such a dramatic comeback after a slow start uh, that should that should be an inspiration to everybody here that's on the board. Um, the Coden Eagles are absolutely dominating uh, the, um, I would say, the northeast corner of the map here. So a lot of stuff. All the territories, I believe, are now taken. Yeah, and a, a surprise. I just realized as we take a look here, we've got Eastport South Manor is coming on, uh, moving up strong. They're now tied with HBT Pythons sitting in the fourth place position. Uh, so that is a new move on the map. Could be some strategy play we weren't expecting to see out of East, ESM. Are they holding their cards till the end? Yeah, I've got my eyes on Mineola. I've been watching what they're doing. It's interesting. We're under 50 minutes. We're under 20 minutes to capital attack phase. I mean, it's anyone's game here, and everyone is making some interesting strategic plays. I wouldn't be surprised. You see a lot of shields over there in the combat log, a lot of successfully defended territories. It's getting harder and harder as the event goes to defeat a project as the quality rises. So really, strategic decisions are starting to manifest right now. Where initial attacks were launched and where do you move on the map based on territories that you're holding? Yeah, where do you move is a really big part of this, isn't it? Oh, wow. Look at that. So Sio Source Code has just taken a territory from Mineola, as we were just talking about Mineola. And uh, that's going to help them out for sure. But like you said, I'm not counting Mineola out either. They are veterans. They have been in the OYO class platform working with KidOYO for many years. So they are playing the strategy as well as the actual skill game. Yeah, a lot of pockets, right? So we're seeing pockets because of the way the map works. And again, having a some kind of knowledge or strategy or the, or the game risk really helps because you can see that there's, uh, it, it's funny because sio has got like a checkerboard thing going. Um, you know, Hop Yeah, they're Hog's all over, got, aren't they? Yep, and Hop Hog's got, a, which which puts them in a good spot. Hop Hog's got a couple of strongholds. Uh, the Manhacks and Potatoes have a couple of strongholds and then a few uh, spots. It's it's really just wide open right now. Again, I'm going to put it out there. Uh, this We've just seen now six straight uh, successful defenses, seven straight successful defenses. Um, usually this means this is when the tide turns, but uh, we're seeing uh, the strength. So people are putting their best work now out there, uh, and it's hard to turn and they keep turning back uh, their challengers. 
Yeah, and we've got the uh, timers running. You see, we've got 47 minutes remaining at 30. Uh, and we're going to pull Mineola in here, by the way. So we're going to pull them in here in just one minute. Um, but what you can see is, is that as this timer counts down, we've got 17 minutes, a little over 17 minutes until the game changes. At that 30 minute mark, we can attack Capitals and we're going to see a whole new game unfold at that point. But right now, we are happy to welcome the Mineola team, which is led by Coach Clifford and Coach Goldfarb. So let's see what's going on in the Mineola Matrix room. Mineola! <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey, Mineola. Tell us what's going on. Tense, huh? It's very tense in here. It's, <laughs> it's quiet, but our team is uh, ferociously working on their projects. Um, they're very excited. A lot of uh, excitement in this room, for sure. Well, you guys came screaming through that auto gate. Uh, how'd you do it? Tell us about what happened. You're seeing it for the first time. Everybody's seeing a gate, the gate concept for the first time. So how'd many only take it on? And how the heck did you guys stream through that thing so quickly? I have to, I have to say, it all goes down to our team. As soon as they saw that, they just ate that up. They were working together, communicating really well, dividing and conquering the questions. Um, it was really cool to see. How, how much nice. of that was your experience uh, having done this really kind of the, one of the founding school districts of the hackathon? How, how important is that they experience? Um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I know a lot of the students have been working on quizzes and they've been going through the pathways. So they kind of had like that already like under control. So they knew how to go about it. They already had a strategy in place. They didn't know what the questions were going to be, but they had already game planned how they were going to work collaboratively and help each other out to get through those questions. Nice. Tell, tell us about the temperature in your room right now. Is everybody, uh, is there a calm? Is there, are they crazy? Or are they, you know, what's going on? It's silent. <laughs> they are they're super focused on what they're working on i'll like turn the camera so you guys can see them team wave everyone wave hey videola <laughs> you, you just hear the clicking of the mice and you can just hear like typing on the keyboard and that's about it Awesome. Well, I mean, we've seen some strong project submissions come in. We see some, I mean, just the teamwork you could tell is very evident there. And what I like is that there's just this overall creativity coming in from the Mineola projects. It, you know, you never know until, you, until you're there. Who knows? Now people are going to look at this game going forward and question is coming through the gate fast a benefit to you how does that play out overall we know, we don't know this is the first time literally you were the first people to ever pass through our auto gate yeah i mean I, I don't know how much of an effect it has because hop hog was i think the last to pass through but now they're in first place so they're yeah. in that territory so i mean i i think it definitely was a cool twist to start the game off um but it definitely didn't stop anybody from expanding quickly up on that map, which is great to see also. Yeah, exactly. Well, and you guys sat up on that top spot, which is tough. You know, you put yourself up on the top, you're the target, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think, I think we're in a good place right now. We're sitting um, tied for third. Um, so hopefully the eyes aren't on us and uh, the top teams can battle each other out up there. Without, well, I see without... some attacks staged against you. So we'll see how you fare on those, huh? But, yeah. And I, and I did want to say, we actually um, have the most females on our team this year than we've ever had before. We have five out of our eight team members are all female, which um, is really cool to see. Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's awesome to hear. I think I might know who some of them are um, based on just seeing some of the challenge submissions coming in and the self-led initiative that's happening there. I think the student empowerment is really impressive and I mean, you guys are phenomenal role models. So it's awesome. I think uh, as being a woman in CS and seeing other women in leading CS, it's crucial that that's going to be how we get our girls in there. You know, Absolutely. and as we can see, you guys are kicking butt. So great work, team. Um, I, have, I have to ask you guys as well, too. And, and again, you know, I'm not asking for any uh, secrets or anything, uh, but do you have any tricks up your sleeve for the last? Uh, we're in inside the last hour here. Do you have any tricks that uh, you're going to pull out here? 
you know, we do have, we do have some tricks yeah. up our sleeve. We can't <laughs> reveal them um, of course, of course. to the public, you know, but we're trying some new things and we'll see how it, how it uh, ends up for us and in those working, final minutes. They're working through it now, so. I think Marvin the Mustang would be smiling right now in front of the high school. So real excited. Uh, yeah, definitely. All and right. I, uh, we're, we have our, um, our, both our middle school and our high school principal here with us. Um, just giving some support. Let's see. Do we have Whitney? We have Whitney yeah. Smith and Amy Trojanowski. Hi. Hi, always Amy. Hey guys. Woo Team Mediola. Thanks for coming hey, out to Smith. support. How are you? We got our foam fingers. We're here. Nice. Come to get a little sugared up over there. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, we'll be looking to uh, to you, uh, high school, because you're coming up next. You're in May, so we'll look to big things coming out of the high school. Plenty to get ready for. All right. Well, thanks, Mineola, so much for taking the time. We're going to let you get back and we're gonna try to jump into another team here real quick. Good luck. Anyone's game. Yeah. Good luck. All righty. I know that there are a couple teams requesting that we come in. Um, oh, great. We, there, there have been some, a little bit of a slow server issue with. Yeah, let me just make an announcement real quick. We're aware of the issue with the hatch editor. We're working on it. We should be back in a couple uh, minutes here. Apologize. It's under heavy load. We're working on it. Be right back. Yeah, just know that every team is experiencing the same thing. So uh, don't. Don't panic too much. Just keep working on what you're working on. Um, if you're worried about anything not saving, you can always download to your machine and re-upload. Um, but it is, it is something that we should have resolved any second here. You know, when technology can fail, it will. And it's okay. We're used to it. We're just going to fail forward. And our dev team might be sweating bullets, but they will get through it. Um, it's it's really in this case it was something um, outside of our control as you as many districts will um, relate that sometimes when you have servers running servers have to do updates and there can be issues we're running a really big event so this will come this will be resolved very shortly and uh, in the meantime we're going to take a moment and I'm sure that this is a very fun time to drop into the room but we're going to bring in the HMS coding eagles led by coach many coaches actually we have coach mullen coach thompson and coach ferrara who we have coach ferrara here on the screen and uh <laughs> we we might have anarchy in the room see what i'm okay. dealing with here okay <laughs> well T, all right, Lata, T, yeah, coach t latawani ferrara if i'm not mistaken if i saw oh, that correctly oh, on the board it, oh, sorry yeah. say that again I said Coach T Tialati Tialatwani. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you can uh, tell me how to pronounce that, that'd be great. Tialatwani. All sure. right. Well, Coach Ferrara, a lot has changed since we saw you in the first half of this game. I know that there was some uh, some tense moments coming through that gate. What happened? Um, we were not able to get through it. Tough. It was a tough <laughs> gate. It was tough, huh? Unexpected. Unexpected. Well, there's always a new element back. to prepare for. I mean, your comeback is is legendary. So you're uh, sitting at the top. It's not over yet. The team don't jinx us. Thanks. <laughs> I know. Every time we mention uh, a team, normally they move down a point. So, uh, uh, so, so you're a veteran. You, your, uh, your team, your district has the defending championship for the upper elementary division. Do you have some of those team members now who are trying to bring the trophy home for the junior division? Yeah, there, there's five members from the upper elementary team that are on the team. There's one, there's two. Go, They're so go, shy. Go, go. Um, I hope they break out of their yeah, shell. So yeah, our team makeup is one one returning junior member um, who's our captain, and then we have five returning from the upper elementary, and then two that are new to hackathons as seventh graders because they saw you know the excitement in the in the building about it and were great coders and decided to try out, and they actually made the team. How's it feel to be uh, sitting up there? You feel like you've got a big bullseye on you now sitting at the top spot? Um, it's nerve wracking, of, of course, because it's when you're up here, you only see your own weaknesses. Whereas I feel like when you're down below, you see all the opportunities. So um, they're doing a great job. They're working together. There's a lot of chemistry in here. So that's what you get from having a team that's worked together already in, in this kind of situation. And uh, 
over the last two weeks, we put them what we were calling the pressure cooker. And I think that's maybe, hopefully it's paying off so far. So I'll let you know in 37 minutes and 52 seconds, 51, 50, 49. How, coach, how we, uh, coach you know, I don't want to jinx you. I don't want to jinx you, but how much would a matching set of trophies mean to the hot box school district? Oh uh, man, that'd be like unprecedented. Right. Uh, so, um, I think we would have a hard time releasing the grip on both. If we had them, uh, it would be nice. Honestly, it, the team's doing great and it'll be a win no matter what, because we're seeing a strategy unfold as it's supposed to, as we're hoping for, but now we're just relying on the strength of our code and, and, you know, strategy can only take you so far. But if you don't have the the coding to back it up, then you're just going to end up seeing all your territories whittle away. And that's what we're we put ourselves in the position to hopefully not see that. Um, so uh, but that was the goal is we're, we're hopefully having um, well defended territories. And, and I think it's paying off so far. And um, they're they're doing great. They're, they're busy. And and uh, aside when they dance behind me, um, it, it's looking good so far. But, you know, the game changes in about six minutes, too. Uh, we'll see what happens then. And um Hopefully that is to our benefit and not um, something that hurts us. So we'll see. All right. Well, Coach Ferrara, I think we're going to let you get back to your team Appreciate as we it. approach that critical moment where the Capitals open up. I'm sure things are going to go a little bit crazy. So best of luck to you. Looking forward luck, to see Coach. how things sort out. And, Thanks and, for joining uh, us. And if if I may, if there's any other schools watching this that aren't participating, you're missing out. You should be involved in this. And it's like one of the best things that's ever happened. So thank you to Kayoyo. Hey. Thank you, Melora and Dev. Thanks everybody involved because it's awesome. The kids hey, are coach, awesome. real quick. Is you, there, coach. coach, is there any school that you'd love to see get into the competition? Oh, I'd love to see more Suffolk representation. Obviously, um, you know, Nassau seems like they, they, they have a, a real stronghold. It's almost like Long Island itself is a map. Hint, hint, future code conquest. Oh, I love um, it. I love it. And, uh, and you know, we, we've, there's been, it's been us and ESM and Kings Park and, uh, you know, Harbor Fields holding down Suffolk. I'm sure I missed somebody. If I did, I apologize. But it would be great to see like a whole team full of, you know, a whole group of Suffolk teams. So, you know, where's Islip? Where's West Islip? Um, let's get that South Shore involved. Sayville, Bayport. I'm calling you all out. We're, we're, we're coming for you. We want you guys coding and then we want to beat you. Yeah. Love it, coach. Love it. Love that. Great job, coach. Good luck. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. That was great. I'd, well, I'd like to see expected. their neighbors to the north. Uh, yeah, let me I'd just make an uh, announcement real quick. We we had uh, the ser two of the three servers. We've got redundancy here. Uh, two of the three servers that had been hosting our, our editor uh, called Hatch crashed. So I've extended the timer by 15 minutes. It affected all teams equally. This will affect the start time of the capital attack phase as well. There's been no advantage for any team at all. We have recovered two of the three servers. We're still working on the third server. So stand by. Hatch should be operational for everybody at this point. Refresh your browsers and we'll keep working on it behind the scenes. Thanks, Dev. That actually gives us some more time to uh, drop into some more coach rooms. We'll be able to do that in a little bit. Uh, I think, you know what, <laughs> you know, it's funny as, as we're sitting here talking with Coach Ferrari, he hates when we, when we pull him in because something always happens. And as we can see, you don't count SIO source code out. They have come back up and now they are tied again for that first place position. Again, many attacks are happening out there. We've got Manhacks at Potatoes sitting in the second place position and HBT Syosset sitting in third and Miniola Matrix tied with ESM sitting in fourth place. So this, this just keeps changing. I probably sound like a broken record saying it, but it's always amazing to me to see how resilient these students are and how they just don't quit. This is three hours of intense brain work. There is no time to dilly-dally. There's no time to refresh, recharge. And I mean, hats off to the teachers and coaches. I know you guys are going through it too. This is an intense moment for everybody and you have to coach them really through some some emotional moments where they might be giving up on themselves, might find discouragement or might really not like the stress of being in the bullseye. Either way, this is a growth experience. These kids are learning how to work together, how to deal with stress together, how to problem solve 
on the spot. And those are skills that employers say to us all the time that they want. I know mo- many of our mentors have gone on to work at big tech companies all around this country. And the number one thing they come back to is the fact that they were a mentor, that they were that they worked with young people, that they can communicate well, that they can explain complex subjects in a very simple way. These are all very high demand skills. So even if you're not going to be the coder in the room, maybe you're not going to be the one writing the program, companies look for people who can explain what's happening, who can help people who aren't involved in the code translate what's happening, be the voice between marketing and the developers, be the voice between product development and and the dev team. All these are big skills, very high demand skills. And what we're doing here is providing an opportunity for students to experience this in a, uh, what we call a sandbox environment where there are no pre-built frameworks for these kids. They are authentically creating projects from nothing. So that's really important. These kids have to think about logic, structure, their code has to run well on top of the visual experience and the art, arts that they're putting into this. You have 14 territories right now that are in dispute uh, as we speak. Um, you're absolutely right. I work for uh, I work for the greatest tech company in the world. Uh, I work for Cisco Systems. And I can tell you that these skill sets are... Um, everything is moving towards this and moving from a hardware model to a software model. So these skill sets are, can be well translated. And look, my, my participation here, um, you know, I can't really code a lick, uh, but I do think I bring something to the table here. And, uh, you know, I think I could help out any kind of uh, coding team. And I just want to hit on something that uh, coach Ferrara said too. I love that. I love that Long Island map idea. I'm not going to lie. I thought that was a, that was very, very, uh, that's impressive. Uh, great, great idea. Um, so who knows how that's going to shake out. Um, but yeah, we, we've got a lot of movement here, uh, a lot of different things going on. And, uh, as you can see, uh, it's very diverse, right? So the map is very diverse. Everybody's got a, still got a, a fighting chance here where, uh, and we can't, we can't reiterate or reiterate it enough. Uh, there's plenty of time left. There is so much time left. Um, the the time's got to be feel like it's moving backwards for Hop Hog being in the top right now. Um, but I'm everybody fine. else, I'm sure the the clock looks like it's it's blasting fast. But um, there is plenty of time, so everybody's got to just uh, hanker down, get their work done, and uh, and keep at it. We are 15 minutes away from the capital attack phase. Might seem like a loop, but Due to the server crash, we moved that back a little bit so everybody could restore some time working inside of their editor. So we got 15 minutes, 12 seconds till capital attack phase. At that point, any territory, any teams that do not occupy a territory on the mainland are vulnerable to capital attacks. The auto gate pyramid territory does not count as a territory preventing capital attacks. So we're going to see some uh, movements probably in some redirecting of efforts once the capital attack phase opens up, which will be interesting because you can only use capital defense projects to defend your own capital from attacks, and you can only use capital defense projects to attack other teams' capitals. So this is really, this is the only project they had uh, 48 hours before the start of the event to create, gave everybody equal opportunity to build it. it Included every individual in your team being able to build their own CDP. And now we're going to get the chance to see uh, what they produced. And uh, in just a minute here, we're going to be getting a chance to talk to the Locust Valley team. Um, and we'll get to see how things are going there. They're, they're a young team too. So there's a lot of pressure on them. I'm sure they're seeing things that they uh, really weren't really weren't prepared for, uh, as our all new teams do. So really brave when our new teams show up for the first time coming into an event with some established teams who have some experience. Uh, so we are um, just looking to bring these guys in. And when we, as we're coming in here, uh, I just want to take one more quick look there. We are still seeing um, this top group of runners out here with the uh, Coding Eagles and SIO source code. Uh, and they've got 13 minutes till Capitals open. All right, so we have two coaches joining us from Locust Valley. Thanks for making time for us. How is, uh, tell us about what's going on in the room, Locust Valley. 
All right. Uh, so this is our second year. So it's uh, definitely pretty intense. We last year came in having a little more, just let's have fun and go with it. This year we wanted to compete a little bit more. So a lot more intensity. We definitely ran into the stamina part in the last 15 minutes where, where we started to feel how much work we were putting in. So uh, that was something new uh, we we're experiencing right now. And the batteries needing to be recharged, you know, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah, some yeah. of those candies you sent us are coming in handy right now. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, coach, how, how do you keep them motivated? Yeah, I think that the kind of enjoy the challenge. It's it's so much fun. So I think that part of it keeps them motivated and going. Uh, but having a group you can talk to about it, that that helps as well. Uh, but they come in with the right attitude. We, we're really enjoying the program and, and the challenges are truly challenging. There's nothing easy about this. And uh, I think looking at other teams projects as well inspires you a little bit too to see what else can be done and how can you challenge yourself. So I think that's built into what what you guys have created. Tell, tell yeah, us a little bit a really about your captain. Point. Our Captain Abby, she uh, she was with us last year. <laughs> she uh, did this virtually with us last year, um, whereas we were able to at least get the rest of the team in, but she was doing it virtually. Uh, so it was great that she wanted to come back and do it and kind of see it on this end. But she's always been one of our, our top coders since we've started it. Uh, she shows up each day in our, our coding class and just gets right to work. And, you know, she's the kind of person who will work on her own. But once she hits a challenge, she'll ask for that and we'll work through it together. And it's kind of that, you know, the way Kidoyo is set up, it's perfect for students like her who can go at her own pace um, but when it gets stuck, can, can communicate, talk about it, build. Um, so kiddo, kiddo Yo and Abby has been a great pairing. Go Abby. <laughs> That's awesome. And I know that uh, you have four teams coming in from your upper elementary division. So it seems like you've got a healthy farm league coming. You guys can start scouting down there and <laughs> already start picking out some of your teams for next year. Um as we come into this, you you guys had this experience to come through the auto gate too, and I'm trying to kind of get a sense from each team how they approach that auto gate, being that it's very different from the rest of the open create part of this map. Yeah, there was definitely that shock at first to see that it was one of the new things that was added, a quiz format, you know, of all the things we were thinking about. So it took us a little bit, you know, everyone was kind of working in their pairs or individually. And then we realized we really need to put our heads together and talk about the things we're trying. So I think the best thing that came out of it was that putting the team together to work together. So we realized, you know, this competition isn't just about what you can do. It's about sharing ideas. So uh, that's what we liked about it the most. It made it more team oriented right off the bat. Yeah. And that, that struggle that they started with, you know, it almost forced them to say, Hey, I can't do this by myself. Let's all put our heads together and, uh, and try to figure this out. That was great. That's awesome to hear. I mean, uh, the goal of this really is to help people understand how important it is to work together and to work on a team because that's really what we're all doing here on this island. The more of us that have skills, the better off we all are. So that's cool to hear that that, that was the outcome. I know we're going to see more of that in future competitions. How's everybody feeling right now about the capital defense projects opening up for attack? Are, are we nervous or... Yeah, it's definitely, uh, again, learning from the first year where we had no idea what we're getting into, uh, a little bit more nerves here and excitement about it, too, to open up and see what other people have done. You know, that that's still something I think we're going to learn a lot this year about and look, take a little bit closer look at, you know, how other people approached it. So we're definitely going to take that more as a, a, a part of our learning curve this year, uh, but we're excited to go at that as well. We also have uh, one of our seventh graders, Max Bamba, who... Uh, has been working on the capital defense project. So even for him, you know, understanding what he has to do to create that project and then maybe learn from it and come back next year with something even better. Yeah, there's nothing better to inspire you than to see what other kids your age are capable of. I see that coming out of every competition that the fire of that's ignited in these kids, it just keeps getting stronger and stronger. And there are certainly some phenomenal skills on display here. So every kid, if you don't walk away with this as the top winner, your 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 heads and tails above almost every kid in your age group, just by being able to be here, by having the 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 drive, the skills to make it onto the team, and the stamina to stay with it to the end, and the bravery to show 
up and put your skills out there for review. It's it's awesome. Super glad to have you guys here. And I can't wait to see all the great things to come from Locust Valley in years to come. All right. Thank, thank you. you very much. Right, back to work. Thank Go. you. <laughs> You are muted, Matt. I said, thanks, coaches. I said, hey, how did I do with your last name? They left. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Pretty good, but it's Gabrisiak. Gabrisiak. All right, you got it. I'll get it, I'll get it right because I'm sure you're going to be back uh, for years to come. Just want to make the announcement. We're, we're on the countdown, seven minutes and change to the capital attack phase. At that point... Any team not occupying a mainland territory is vulnerable to capital attack. Only capital defense projects can defend your capital. Only capital defense projects can be used to attack other capitals. So this is uh, going to tell us a little bit about that front side planning that every team was engaged in and the projects that were being built by all team members. It could dramatically change the map. We'll see how this goes. All right. Yep. So this is a very tense time on the map because now if you are one of the teams that does not have a territory currently lit up with your color, you are likely going to come under attack by one of the teams that is trying to push themselves up. And uh, as I'm saying this, we can see that we've had the first map movement at that top place in quite a while. We haven't seen those those top two teams budge, um, but we have SIO source code taking a territory and pushing them up to 15. Now we have a couple of attacks waged against the uh, Hop Hog team. So I'm sure again that that's tense. Every time you see a, that little square appear with a number in it on top of your territory, you start to sweat because yeah. you're fine so long as nobody's attacking you. <laughs> everybody it's funny too because it's eerily quiet in a couple places down on the bottom of the board um but uh on the southern southern part of the board but on the northern part we're starting to see a little bit uh hop hog is uh again they're fighting it out sio source code pull back into the lead um i would imagine that's who's going after them at this point or it could be man hacks that they're they do border um i i I got to tell you, I got an eerie feeling on uh, Manhaxit, though. I, I feel like this is where we're going to see them start to make uh, some serious moves up the board here. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, and, you know, I want to try to jump into another team room while we have the chance here uh, right before these capitals are going to open up. So we're going to bring in the Beth Page, Eagles in Control, and we're going to spend just a couple of quick minutes with them and then get out of their way because I know that nobody's going to be interested in talking to us right when those capitals open. So we have um, we have Beth Page coming in. And this is, we have three coaches in here. We have Coach Atard, Coach Laspina. And if you don't know Coach Laspina, he, you definitely are going to want to know him. Uh, if you're involved in CS, he heads up the Long Island CS Teachers Association, providing amazing information to our local teachers who are teaching computer science and coding. He is a tremendous uh amount of resource for us all. And I believe we also have a new coach joining us from Beth Page, Coach Tedesco. So uh, welcome Beth Page. Um, are they in here with us? Okay, uh, that's fine. That happens to the best of us. So we can always push them back on. Yeah, that'll give me a few minutes to practice, and that'll give me a few minutes to brush up on some of the names of their uh, of their team. They took the the Aztec uh, theme extremely seriously in Beth Page and Control. Um, you know, Eagles here, they they took it very seriously. So uh, I'm I'm practicing some of those names. So uh, Witsi Lapucci, uh, Amoxley. Uh, Tilatuani, Quetzalcoatl, to, uh, Tonatsin. So, yeah, it should be fun. Yeah, well, we're going to see if we could pull in a team we were, uh, that we were going to head into after Beth Page. So, while we're doing that, um, let's see. 
I'll, I'll let you know when we can uh, cut to them. We're three minutes away from the Capitol's opening. Super stressful. You know, I feel like we've we've spent a lot of time talking about these top teams, and you really don't want to discount these teams that are right under there. Holding on this entire time, we've been seeing the Royal Waffle Wildcats sitting in there from East Williston and Grand Ave Gamers, the West Hempstead Rams, don't count them out, Harbor Field, Tornadoes, uh, Los Harbor Fields Hackers, <laughs> that's cute. Um, we're just in Locust Valley. So it's, you know, this is going to be the stressful point right here because in just any minute here, we're going to see that it's not just about the projects that you are building right now. It's about what were you doing from Tuesday morning when the map opened and you saw the theme for the first time until right now, because that is the only time where projects were being built ahead of time. Capital defense projects were being built. And so we're going to see now they have they cannot use the capital defense that there that is in there currently holding theirs they have to have a, a whole other capital defense project that's good enough to try to take over what's holding the capitals currently it's a lot of stress uh who knows how it's going to play out but a lot of it's going to be about how much time was given to these students to work from that tuesday until now and how much time did they put in it on their own and uh wow where did they come from? Eastport South Manor moving into the third position, tying with Manhaxit Potatoes. I did not see this coming. Dom King? Yeah, unbelievable. Um, you know, we knew that they were going to do something and we knew that they were going to make a move at some point. But this is, uh, this is a pretty big move to go sliding up the board here. Um, you know, and, and we were talking about it. There's a lot of one of the things you had mentioned about uh, East Williston, the, the Royal Waffle Wildcats. They are playing phenomenal defense. So uh, their territories, they're holding on to it. They just I saw them just turn back three different attacks. Um, so uh, pretty, pretty wild stuff. Again, and Eastport ESM, South Manor just moved up another point. I literally did not see this coming. They held. You could see this as strategy. The strategy play is in effect. Now, what what's going to happen with the capital defense? Are they yeah. ready? Can they keep pushing themselves up? This could be a huge upset. And they're, they're definitely on the move here. Um, and then, you know, we also see, uh, like I said, the Coding Eagles right up there. They're under attack right now in that North Territory that we have highlighted right here. Um you know, just another move by Sayoko just grabbed, just snatched up uh, another territory from the Coden Eagles. Um, so there's, there's a lot going on here. Uh, the capital defense is going to, is really going to tighten it up on everybody's room here. So let's see what happens. Sayo code is playing hardball right here in the final two, three minutes where the last of the submissions can be made. Bam. They're coming on and they are at 17 points. I don't, I'm not discounting anybody. And as you know, the capitals each are worth a point. So if you do take a team capital, those points get added to your overall score too. So I mean, just to all of a sudden see the top three be, I mean, this is not at all what the map looked like when we first started. This is not what the leaderboard looked like at the beginning of the game. The team I wouldn't, the team I also wouldn't uh, sleep on is the Ram fam. Right, so keep an eye out for the Ram uh, team. They have a great coach, Coach Perlow, um, doing a tremendous uh, job. So I would keep an eye on them too. I, I feel like they have a lot of tricks up their sleeve. Uh, moving on. All right, the capital attack phase has begun. Capital attacks are now enabled on the map. Anyone not holding a mainland territory is able to attack other capitals. Or I'm sorry, I said that backward. Anyone not holding a mainland territory is able to be attacked by other teams. So we're about to see that. If Doug, if you could scale out the map so we could see the uh, view of it. We are inside the 30-minute mark. Look at all of those attacks being waged on these capitals. This is insane. Everybody is cutthroat right now. I am positive that we are going to see some point changes happening here. And again, okay, look at that. All of a sudden now we've got Mineola, Manhaxit, and ESM all coming into that tied for third place. That's incredible. I know we're going to see that change again. Um, 
All right. So we are, uh, we were going to be bringing in uh, some of some of our other teams. We're just experiencing a little bit of a challenge with bringing them actually in. If we don't make it around to them, uh, let's not worry about it because we're in this final uh, stress time anyhow. But I will keep you posted if we can figure out how to get anybody in. I think we're I think we're uh, going to be able to jump into a team here any minute. I'm just waiting for my my team to give me that. Um, all right, so there's we'll still a lot of attacks here. sitting on the main map. We've got one territory sitting with seven attacks on it. Okay, so what it's not yet nine nine attacks and one with seven. That's pretty crazy. Eight, eight now. Another team just attacked that territory. So lots of people are holding on to that for the last bit of it. Now you have a little bit of a distraction thing going on here. While people are looking at the capitals, are you going back and looking at the territories that you could take? I mean. Teams' attentions are all over the place now. Strategy is at play. Preparation is going to show off right now. Those teams that are prepping. Um, and we still have that three-way tie sitting there. And not much in the point value is changing. And that's really because, as I mentioned before, the projects are coming into a queue. So our mentors have to clear out a lot of these projects in order for us to see some of the results popping up on the other territory attacks. There's so many territories under attack, and we've got 26 minutes left. So you can really tell that the teams have been working really hard in this last hour to get ready for these, this final push. I think it looks like we have somebody, uh, one of the coaches' rooms. All right. All right. We're at East Williston. I see we've got Dr. Bieberman and we've got Coach Keller. Awesome. Guys, what a game, huh? How are we feeling over at East Williston? Let's get them unmuted. Yeah, let's make sure you're unmuted. Uh, we're good here. We're good. The kids are having fun, which is the most important thing to us. And they're being loud, as you can hear. We're excited. Are you surprised by uh, any of the, are, are the kids surprised by anything that they're seeing on this map? Any of the project work or? Just the, uh, just the questions in the black flag gate uh, project, like Aztec information that they have not learned yet. Yep. So Google searches are uh, crucial. That was a big yeah. So, so your team came through, you, you cleared the gate. Did they work together to do that? You have two teams in the room. Were there was there some fierce competition between those two teams, or did they uh, work we together? Have, we have not been fostering uh, inter-team competition only because it's all one will throw. But um, we did. They did. Uh, they worked individual teams, but they worked as a group. One person um, was answering the questions. The rest of the team was like finding the answers to the questions. Nice. So. so it was good. One person was just submitting, and the others were finding the answers. Are, are you uh, are you all in the same room? All the, the your yeah. teams? Yes, two teams of eight and us, <laughs> and other adults coming and going. Is that is it bedlam or is it? Uh, it sounds like it's a little bit of bedlam, but uh, that could be a good thing. It gets loud and it gets really quiet. Now, will the two of you fall instantaneously asleep at the end of this event, or <laughs> will. will you sleep standing? Uh, possibly in the car on the way home. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. There's so much energy that goes into it and enthusiasm. Uh, one of the things I think I, I'd like to just point out is in order to be a great coach, you, you have to model and you have to model failure as much as success. And I'd say that I see so much grit coming out of you guys for some in your submitting project work for us to evaluate and you don't give up. You know, I think I saw I saw a funny one about a Simon Says project with Hatch that Dr. Bieberman was probably beating her head against the wall over for a couple of months. <laughs> yes, months, months, months. But you finally succeeded. So it's so amazing to see because I think the kids need to see that, that the, the struggle isn't just at their level. The struggle's at all of our levels and we're all trying to lift ourselves up. So kudos to you guys for always setting such positive role models for your kids. It's really awesome to see. We talk about fail forwarding a lot. Yeah. In every, in coding and everywhere. Yes, they're agreeing in the background. <laughs> 
But it's important because I, you know, every time a kid walks into the room, I want them to know that it's not just them that doesn't pass the first time necessarily. And it took me at least six tries on that project. So um, when they saw the final thing and they saw that I finally got it, they were more excited, I think, than I was because they were so happy for me. So it, it definitely pays off because they just, it shows that they can if they keep at it. That's awesome. You're, you're muted, Dom King. Which is how important is it as far as the uh, support you get from your leadership? Oh, it's incredibly important. I mean, we, first of all, guys, guys, thank you. Um, we, we wouldn't be, first of all, we wouldn't have a kiddo, yo. But secondly, uh, we wouldn't also be, uh, Kim and I wouldn't be left on our own to do all of the things we do in our classrooms and be able to have two teams um, hacking now, even though they're young, they're much younger than a lot of the other schools. We only have uh, five, six, seven here, and only six and seven can compete. So they're competing against kids that are much older than them, and physically and 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 physiologically and, and what they've learned in school. But they're still trying. So we got a lot of support for that. And it's not about winning for us necessarily. It's more about getting them prepared to move on to high school and competing that way. Well, they seem like they seem like they're having a, a heck of a good time back there, and uh, it seems like you guys you guys are building something very special there. It's uh, it's obvious for anybody from the outside looking in, uh, and I'm excited to see what the results are going to look like. Yeah, they're and they're trying extremely hard, so you know we're happy with what they're doing. They keep winning, they keep losing, they keep winning, they keep losing, but it's okay. I think you nailed it right on the head there too. It's not at the end of the day. It's not just about the win. It's about all of the value that you gain from showing up and from having that grit to stick with it all the way to the end. And you guys are doing a great job. Plus, if, if, if it's fun, then the kids want to do it. And what we're all doing together by making it fun is creating an environment that is easy to learn in and giving them skills that are going to carry through to college and beyond. So you can hear that in the room. You're, you're doing an awesome job. Thanks. They ask what the prize is. And, you know, sometimes the answer is the personal satisfaction. You're going to feel good about it. And that's what matters at the end of the day. Good job. Keep going. Keep pushing. Tell, tell them t-shirts. <laughs> Everybody's going to get those t-shirts. But yeah, that's all. <laughs> all right. Well, East Wilson, thanks so much. We're going to let you get back to it. There's only 20 minutes left here. Great job both of the teams and we look forward to seeing how this all wraps up. Okay. Thank you. Thanks guys. Thanks joining us. Awesome. And we are back at the map again. Yes. Yeah, so if I could come in and make a comment. So hopefully all the teams will hear as we approach the final 20 minutes of this event, as you see the challenges stacking up for all teams, judges are under a lot of pressure. Please don't submit un improved projects we would refer to that as projects spamming your territories and it won't it's not going to yield you a positive result try to you got to improve your projects from prior fail events all right everybody is uh, under pressure i understand desperation spamming that certainly can be part of it you're just holding on to the very end but in these final 20 minutes try to take a deep breath and resolve to improve your projects. See if you can't squeak out some victories on some of these closely held battles. You might have to come back into your capital. If you uh, find your capital taken by another team, that's the first thing you have to do. You got to re-seize your capital before you can move back into the mainland. All right. So uh, this is that moment in the event where nerves start getting frayed a little bit. But please try not to, to spam the judges. It just slows the whole process down. It won't yield a positive result. Back to it. All right. So as we see the board is moving, I just want to remind everybody, uh, follow us on social media. Use our hashtag, CodeConquest2022. ton of activity on social media right now. Very excited uh, sharing uh, a lot of information out there. So um, just to... The board is uh, the board's on fire, right? <laughs> like literally, you know, everything yeah, is in dispute right now. It's absurd, and I 
there, there's still anyone's game. There's still so many possible attacks that are out there. There's all the map itself is under pure attack. And then, you know, once the submissions close in 18 minutes, it's going to take a little bit for our judges to judge everything. So make sure you stay tuned. And I know you're not going anywhere, but make sure you stay tuned in so that you can hear about our other contest winners. Um, and in the meantime, I know that we're going to pull in our last of our uh, last but not least, certainly uh, of our teams. And we are Clean going up, to up. cut over to West Hempstead led by coach Perlo. Uh, so bring in West Hempstead and let's hear from them. I know their team has worked exceptionally hard. I see them in Kidoyo dark mode, pushing their skills forward in their own community. They are really working so hard to lift each other up and to become leaders. And I think that there's a lot to say about the the modeling that the that the admin team and their and their teacher coach is setting for these kids. They're, the bar is it's set high for them, but the support is there and they feel empowered and it's, and we're seeing it play out. So let's see, do we have West Hempstead in the room? Queue like, up. There they are. Coach. I know probably it's, it's tough to pull everybody in at this final hour here. I see coach Make Perla. Sure we got a, we got a sneaky view in there to see what's going on in, uh, in Ram fam territory. And let's see if we can make sure we're unmuted. I'm not hearing any sound coming out of the Ram fam, and that can't be. There's not that many kids in the room that could be quiet all at once. No, they? We are very quiet. We're being very quiet in the Ram fam, very diligently planning a strategy. Oh, I, I had a feeling. Nice. I, so I had a feeling you, so you do have a couple tricks up your sleeve. We're going to see yeah. some uh, Ram have- chicanery. Yeah, <laughs> yes, there is. Yeah, they're laughing. They like that word. <laughs> the canary. For canary. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I've seen the Rams really pick up their skills from the very first event that they came into. Uh, you guys have really been pushing yourselves. I see your students uh, going well above and beyond the wow. expectation of creating courses for each other to learn from, uh, mentoring happening amongst themselves and also uh, beyond the district. The other thing I'll have to say is some incredible team sportsmanship going on. The positive messages coming out of West Hempstead, the encouragement, not only to themselves and other members of their team, but to the rest of the teams. It's just stand out. How, what do you think is happening? Why is it so special? Um, all the the students that are coming out of West Hempstead. Tell us a little bit about what you have going on there. We, we have amazing students in West Hempstead. And with uh, this all happened, all of that positivity that you've seen happens after hours. And they get on and create little meets for themselves. And when someone is struggling, they lift that person up and help them in any way they can. They really work together cohesively. I'm re- I could not be more prouder of these students. Yeah, what fantastic role models they are being for each other. And I think for the rest of the school, because... You know, we have a lot of struggle and strain going on in the world today, obviously. And to see when people can work together, even when they have differences, it's so important. And I'm really inspired by the team there. Not to mention the project submissions coming in this year were fantastic. They, there's one student in on this team, Code Muncher. I think you know him. I know and- Code Muncher. He, his project was, he's smiling. His, his project was so good. We shared it with GW. The GW students are trying to emulate his work. So he doesn't even realize that not only is he inspiring our West Hempstead Middle School students, he's inspiring our George Washington students as well. And I've seen, if you've seen the board on George Washington, all of a sudden these, these students are trying to catch up to him. Nice. Yeah, I, I know that there's a little bit of brother rivalry going oh. on, and I've seen, I've seen yeah, that. Just a tiny bit, a tiny bit. His brother wanted to be here today, but he was not allowed. He has to wait for his turn in May. Yeah, I, yeah. I like the guy. Well, I like the guy in the back waving the finger. He, he looks oh, like he's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Kenoya. He's, he's been singing to us all day to oh, to de-stress her. us. Yes. <laughs> Great work. Great work, team. Great work, Ram fam. You guys are uh, you're inspiring a lot of uh, districts. Any districts, uh, coach, that you'd like to see jump in, that you'd like to take a shot at? Um, I, I have personal uh, Mineola. I wouldn't mind taking a shot at them. 
Oh, nice. As a resident, as a resident in there oh, no. as well. Nice. I think they carry a nice heavy bullseye around with them just, you know, yeah. for everybody's you enjoyment. Your super, I know your superintendent take a shot at him. No question about that. So uh, the big Ram himself would like to take a shot at the big Mustang. I don't think there's any oh, question. He even called him out in his interview. So. Oh, no, did he? Did he? That's funny. <laughs> uh, the other way, my, Mineola called him out. So I'm excited oh, to see oh, what all happens. Right. All right. Yeah, I, I think there's a challenge going on there. I think we might <laughs> see this. I think they. I think he wanted to move it to a foot race or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could do a mini hackathon between the Mustangs and Rams and see. Um, that would be fun. That would I love be it. Fun. I love this. I love the spirit. You guys are. You, you guys are uh, absolutely inspiring us, and uh, we, we admire all the work you guys are doing. Just Thank some you. great work there. Well, it's all joy on my part. I, I really have to say that this is you very like joyful. Being tortured? They, they they want to know. I, I enjoy them being tortured. They're saying. <laughs> hey, hey, well, you know, every Forge. kid is lucky. They're going to remember oh. Coach Perlo going forward. Uh, well, we really coach, model a tremendous attitude. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I, it's really, truly joyful. I really do uh, love every minute of this. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Well, we're going to, we're going to let you guys go for the last 12 minutes. Dig in Rams, super proud of everything that you've accomplished. Make sure you take a look at all the good projects that are out there, because I, I know how you guys don't give up and you'll be back. Coach that upper elementary team. You've got some student mentors there that are awesome leaders and instructors. So, and that's our director who just bought pizza for the team. So he just walked in with pizza. So I hey, Mr. That. Cam Jemmy. <laughs> Now back into infrognito mode. <laughs> infrognito. All right, infrognito. We'll let you go. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye, Bye West Hempstead. Bye. Bye. West Hempstead. Go Ram fam. <laughs> well, here we are in the final 12 minutes. All of the work, all of the stress is about to come to an end, and somebody is going to walk away with that big trophy. Who do you think it's going to be? Dom King. Look, if I if I was uh, a betting man, I would look at look out for the uh, Code Eagles. I think the Code Eagles make a make a last second push here, uh, push themselves over the top. You know, one thing I will say about Sia Source Code for for the previous three years, they've been so close at Southwoods, only to see it taken from them at the very end. I think we're seeing a doubling down on the effort a seriousness level that they brought to the, to the competition to stay consistent at this level, as all the teams know is not easily done. So I think they've been at the top all day. They've been uh, fielding a lot of competitive onslaughts of projects aimed at their territories. And here they are at the top. It's going to be, it's anyone's game, but I'm sure they're feeling the pressure. What the other, the other team I, I would be, if I was uh, one of the leaders on top here, one team I'd be looking over my shoulder at is uh, the potatoes, right? Man hacks it. Um, and the, and again, Syosset's, uh, you know, the pythons are nobody, not the, not the pythons, the pythons are definitely somebody uh, I would keep an eye on as well. But look, if, if you're, you're asking me and uh, you're making me, I'm telling you, Code and Eagles is the, the team I would be on the lookout for. Yeah, I, gosh, I don't even, I'm afraid to say anything, to be honest with you, because what are you talking there's about? so you many attacks. You just put me attacks. on the spot. You just put me on the well, spot. Yeah, I had yeah, to pick somebody. I don't really care about that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> you that have was to pick a setup. somebody You now. walked right into it, Dom <laughs> King. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, it, you know, it was great to get the chance to watch these videos too. And if, if you were just paying attention to the Zoom, go back. Um, that live stream is going to be posted up there as a recorded session. So you can catch some of those great interviews. To me, it was just fantastic to connect with all the district partners. I think more than anything, you can see that we're all in it together. It's playful, fun environment. Even if even if your team does not walk out with the trophy, what you walk out with is a group of students who are now driven to push themselves even further. And that's that's really what we're all trying to do here. It's about, you know, like if you look back on the interview with Dr. Rogers from Syosset, he talks a lot about the importance of making it fun. If it's fun, then the kids are going to want to keep coming back. And, and coding should be fun. This is a language for now and their future. And they understand it better than we ever could. They're the natives to it. 
you can see what in the projects that they're putting out there. It's phenomenal. The, as I mentioned, the capital defense projects that we had to determine the winners between it was it was rough. Even I mean, I mean, you know, Dom King, we're looking at the team logos. How many good ones? where we were just like, you could see them streaming up here. The, the logos that we're going to be deciding on are, are what's sitting next to the team names over here. Yeah. I, I would say it's, it's funny because it, within one year, right. Um, within one year, the improvement is dramatic. Um, and I thought they were great last year, so I'm not taking anything away. So it's, it's, but it's absolutely, it's amazing the, how, how well everyone's done and how well everyone's evolved. Um, so yeah, d- definitely true. cool. We've gotten to see a lot of good moves, um, and you've gotten to see a lot of skills being sharpened. And what I what I'm most excited about is that you know these students that are competing right now, they're getting they're in the as we said to uh, you know the Ram fam, like you know you're in the forge right now, and you're gonna they're gonna forge champions out of the the students now are gonna get the keep doing this for another couple of years here with the hackathon on the high school level. Um, and I, I think the teams that are building, you could see some real building going on. Locust Valley talked about building, obviously East Williston's, uh, East Williston's talked about building. Uh, you've seen these teams build um, and they're starting to close the gap on the, t- on the top teams. And then you see some of the top teams doubling down, right? So they double down on their skills and they keep bringing in. Um, and the most important part is that we're, we're building, building lifelong learners, right? Learners, people that understand that there's a challenge that sometimes you aren't going to necessarily win, but you're a winner for competing. Uh, so real, real exciting stuff. Um, and I, I could say, you know, and everybody says it and it's the truth. It, everybody's a winner who competes. Uh, but I can tell you that I think everybody would like to take that trophy on too. Okay. It's nice to sit with that trophy. I, I, I know that, uh, you know, it's cool to even see on the, I can't really show you the trophy at the moment. It's sitting right behind me, but, um, you know, to sit here and look at the names, uh, and the, and the, the, the divisional winners, when you get the trophy, it's the same trophy that's moving between the teams. Um, so to get to hold on to that and get to see the legends that came before you and hopefully put your name back on there. If you were on it before, you know, nobody wants to let go of that trophy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, it's like the Stanley cup, right? So you get the, you get to bring it, it's in your school. Um, you know, I've heard, uh, I've heard they let some, sometimes they let the kids take it, I think, which is terrific. Um, so, so real cool stuff going on there. Um, as long as they don't drop it in the bottom of the pool, like they did to the Mario Lemieux did to the Stanley cup. I think we should be in good shape. Um, or lose it at McSorley's, which uh, which I think one of the Rangers did. Um, but I think uh, great great stuff here with the trophy. And like I said, everybody kind of wants a shot. Uh, I, I know that one of the school districts, and I won't say who, I know they had a place in their trophy case ready to go. Uh, they had the trophy case ready. It was vacant. I actually even called out uh, the superintendent on it. So uh, r- real cool stuff. The map is, is on fire. Absolutely positively on fire right now. Yeah. And you could see, I mean, that we still, we have some territories that again are sitting with so many submissions on it. We've got that one purple territory right now. Uh, that is, looks like it's being held by East Welliston and it has seven attacks coming in against it. Seven. <laughs> seven. Um, <laughs> yeah. And if I could just give you an idea of how this is going to culminate in the final five minutes. So the timer will eventually hit zero, zero, zero. At that point, the game will not be completed and final results will not be rendered until all outstanding challenges showing on the map have been resolved by the judges. When the judges receive challenges, they receive them in the order they're submitted and the results on the map change based on the the order of submissions as well. So even though some challenges might be easier to check than others, the uh, app is built to queue those up so that the results rendered are in the order that the submissions came in. After zero zero happens, we'll judge those final results. Once all challenges and territory attacks have been cleared by judges, the final result will be rendered and we will have a champion. At that point, you're going to start to see we have some other awards for uh, some other competitions that were kind of inside this event, like best team avatar, best team banner and such. So stick around to check out those. Um, 
we are getting a few reports in that there are some hatch project load issues. We see this and it's happening. Um, it's being looked into by our dev team right now. So it's saying it's a server error. So that seems to be systematically happening. Um, and we might need to push five more minutes onto the map dev. Let's, let's, I'll leave that up to you, but we're going to circle back in and see again, of course, you know, we have uh, 19 teams, eight competitors on each of those teams pushing projects in. Um, so in the, in, when you have servers, we could have three servers up and running and we could still have issues. This is just how technology goes. So we're not going to panic. Everybody knows what's happening. If we need to add a few more minutes to the map to account for it, we can do that. Um, but just everybody know you don't need to call us into the room if you're experiencing a hatch issue. We are all experiencing the same thing. Hey, Dev, let me ask you a quick question. Is uh, the fact that I uh, threw on my scally cap uh does this make me a black hat hacker does this qualify me as a black hat hacker of course All right, absolutely cool. welcome to is the it because it because it because of the bandana and the hat or is it just the hat makes me a black hat hacker mostly the goatee but the hat helps I think that's a classic look to goatee we, we discussed that i think uh i actually think that king's park uh i think if uh Dr. Egan would shave into a goatee. I think that gives uh, Kings Park a huge advantage. So we threw that out there a couple times to him. Uh, you know, it's up to him. I'd like to give strategy lessons here on on it. Got we're we're down to the wire. Um, we're and we're competing here. So uh, we're wishing everybody luck here, and uh, we think everybody's just done a tremendous job today. Yeah, and uh, just so everybody knows, we are actively working on the, the hatch server issue. Um, it is what it is. We will adapt as we have to, but just know that we are watching this. Yeah, we'll keep, uh, as we said, we're going to keep on that. Uh, follow us on social media. Make sure you use our hashtag code conquest 2022. A lot of cool stuff going on. Um, if you, uh, if you basically missed any of this, right, you're going to, you'll be able to watch it back, right? Is that correct, Maura? Yeah, the same link that you use for the live stream, you can come back to and you'll see this. You'll also get a chance to, if you're interested, watch some of our previously recorded uh, Kiddoyo Dark Mode shows, which run typically during the summer and throughout the fall. We pause everything as we come into hackathon season because you can see how crazy busy things get. Um, you can see that some more time was just added onto the map. This is to account for the hat error. Hatch is back. Everybody can um, refresh screens, get themselves back into it. We should be okay. I think we're going to probably remove a little bit of that time. I'm not sure from the timer. I'll let Dev update us. But Hatch uh, server is back and running. So everybody should be okay with that. So um, there we go. There you go. That's how, it, that's how it works. You fail forward. You don't lose your cool. Technology is what it is, right? So more, I don't, I try not to deal in rumor and innuendo, uh -oh. um, but I have to ask a question. Is it, is it true that there was an interview conducted between myself and Kimitzer and Tim from Hop Hog that was too hot to handle for dark mode? I can confirm this. It was a little too spicy and, uh, you know, it truly 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 was more than we could handle and i think tim himself tim mccarthy would know that it was just truly too much what do you think come sir was it truly too much i think so i answered one. it was it was truly it was truly tough um i think we are seeing the budding of one of the great code rivalries on long island between east wilston and hop hog i think that uh and again the interview too hot to handle for dark mode um, I think that you'll, you could tell in that there was some serious heat going on between those districts, uh, Wildcats and Eagles. So, uh, and now with, uh, you know, with the leadership, I know there's some heat between the leadership between Dr. Murphy and, uh, Dr. Gately. So that's, that's going to be one of those things that we're going to see that rivalry play out, uh, on the coding maps uh, over the next few years, I believe. Well, we're back. Uh, the timer has been reset. We're at three minutes and 50 seconds. So it's counting down. Look at the map. 
there are just as many if and there were an hour ago on this map. So we know that teams were building nonstop. Maybe some teams were holding some things back. I know there's strategy playing out here. We could see it happening right now. The judges are uh, definitely working for it right now. Yeah, and I'll just announce we added a couple extra minutes back in for the downtime on the server. We have three minutes and 18 seconds left until submissions will no longer be accepted and all existing submissions on the map will be cleared by judges. Right now, those rooms have got to be hot, right? Not just temperature wise, but they got to be hot. Three, you know, three minutes, you, you're, you're down to the wire. You can make some serious moves. There's only a few points separating uh, the teams here. Chance to move up, chance to beat maybe your uh, rival, even though, uh, you know, they're your, your teammates. You're, you have school districts with multiple teams. I'm sure they want to beat each other out. So we're going to see what happens there because um, that's – I'm sure there's bragging rights at stake as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to have bragging rights? I think if you don't take home the trophy, you could still brag about your own performance in this. I mean, the project work to coming in here is – oh, <laughs> key. look at that. There is a tie for first place. We are seeing these things move. I, I, I'm surprised to actually see a couple territories turn over. That's a really big deal for Hop Hog to get those two wins right there. I'm sure that that room just erupted. Um, but there's a lot of defend projects going on. That means that those teams that put those projects in that are holding them really worked hard. They're hard to beat. It's going to take something extremely special to push them out of their spot. As a reminder, you're going to see the timer run out. That means that you will be done making submissions. No more submission pro can come in. You have to just watch the map now and hope and pray that what you have submitted is enough to push you into that lead. I mean, the excitement right now is off the charts to see two teams right now in these final minute and 30 seconds sitting at the top. Does that mean that they're going to be the ones sitting there at the end? No, it does not mean that. That is not what it means because all of these teams that are sitting in that striking distance, they could be the ones waging these attacks against everybody. And to still see territories that have three, six projects, three to six projects coming in on them, and that's a lot that could turn over. That means there's a lot of teams vying for these. There's 14, 14 territories are in dispute as we speak, uh, not, not counting any of the capital stuff. So... Yeah, 14 territories in dispute right now. I mean, this this is far from over. Um, even within the last minute, uh, it's far from over. So stay tuned. This is going to be a very exciting finish. Yeah, and you might not realize, but with those capital defense projects up there, when you're seeing like nine attacks on a team or eight attacks or seven attacks, those are all unique projects because you're pro as a reminder, no project can be duplicated on this map. So if your project is holding a territory or it's holding a capital, it can't be reused. It can only be used to hold one thing down. So that means that uh, there's so much work that went into this. These kids have been going at it nonstop since Tuesday morning when they got the announcement about what the theme was. So this is the hard work paying off at the end. And almost every territory is under attack right now. This is, we have not seen anything like this before. There are so many projects happening at the end. This is the bad finish that we were waiting for. Yep. And it's going to be, it's going to be point by point. You can see that Southwoods, SIO source code coming out of Southwoods has uh, just moved up two points. So there's, now they have a ton of their territories are under attack right now. I see one, two, three, four, five, six of their territories under attack. Who knows if anybody can take them? Um, and, how, and who knows how many attacks they have launched against all of these other territories? Tell you what, I'm stressed out and I don't even have any skin in, the, in this game as a team. I'm totally uh, just at the will of what's going to happen with the map. It's extremely exciting. But submissions have closed. Okay, so now it's just up to the judges. All right, so while submissions are closed, I want to talk a little bit about the competitions that we had running before. We had three different events, uh, or sorry, three different prize categories. One was for the best team banner, one was for the best team logo, and one was for the best team uh, capital defense project. Now, 
It's the original capital defense project. It was required to be submitted by 9 a.m. yesterday morning. Um, some teams had a little bit of a technical difficulty getting theirs in. If you missed it altogether, you could use your project, but it didn't qualify for the judging. Thankfully, we had everybody in that could be judged for this. Um, so are we doing the banner first, Mentor Doug, or the team logo? Okay. All right. So the team logo was extremely challenging to choose a winner. We really battled this one out right to the end um, because there were just so many good ones. Uh, so Dom King, did you want to announce the winners? So this is for best team logo. And again, this was the little icon that plays next to the team and represents them throughout the entire competition. This could be made as a uh, static image or it could be as a moving image or a GIF. When, whenever you're ready. It's the Kings Park keystrokes. We love the uh, the whole. We love the image. We love the night. Um, and uh, I got. I think we all cracked up when we saw him uh, get thrown into the trash can, but yeah. still give thumbs up. So that was pretty awesome. So congratulations to the Kings Park keystrokes. The movement, the skidding, the throw, the comedy element of it. Just really fantastic. Great job. You guys are doing an awesome job. Super creative. I'm sure that that must have been like 500 plus frames of code. So congratulations, Kings Park Keystrokes on best team logo. Next up, we have the team banners. The team banners uh, are there to represent the team as a whole. They were posted up earlier in the week, so we've had plenty of time to evaluate these. Um, there were some great submissions again on this, and it's always so tough to choose, but at the end of the day, we came away with a winner. The winner, Dom King? The rip. Go ahead, mentor Doug, post it up there. The Miniola Mustangs. The Miniola Mustangs or Miniola Matrix coding team. So good job, Miniola. Excellent. We loved the color, the movement, the running Mustang was awesome. Running Marvin. I yeah, call the Mustang Marvin. So running Marvin there. Unbelievable. Great Marvin. jobs. Great job by the Matrix. Miniola oh, Matrix. Yeah, the Miniola Matrix. Awesome job, guys. Love the creativity. It was and and it just, it shined through so clearly. So your graphic design, your colors, uh, your timing, it was very clever. And to not just use a steady stream of ones and zeros, but to try to give us that element of art behind it. Super impressed. Congratulations. Really love what you guys did there. Finally is the Capital Defense Project. Now this one was absurdly hard to choose from. In fact, our team was torn and we had to do some live debate, really dig into the nitty gritty of the code. And at the end of the day, we it was really down to three teams um, that we had to fight between. So I think maybe I will just list out the other two teams first that almost were awarded this because it was literally, it was like so close. So uh, I would say the tie for second place of this, it would be um, Hop Hog, Code and Eagles, and Miniola Matrix. Both of your capital defense projects were outstanding. Our team had a really hard time deciding between them. And honestly, even that, just to get into those top three, there were so many other good ones that came in that were so amazingly entertaining and well thought out and kudos to everyone. We are going to be posting some links to these, but the overall winner, go ahead and display our winner. Sciacid HBT the, Pythons. The Pythons. This game in particular was awesome because uh, you started out in this, you have this nine by or three by three grid and you start out as the little pawn down at the bottom and you have to go through each of these territories 
exploratory realms of gameplay. Um, and that that gameplay, as you conquered each one, gave you one of the hieroglyphs. And once you collected all the hieroglyphs, then it would open up the final kind of animation. And it was just phenomenal. The gameplay was really tough, very challenging. In fact, I'll go ahead and admit it. I couldn't really get through most of the levels. Okay, I couldn't get through any, but whatever. Uh, I watched people get through it, so that was good enough for me. Um, but it was it was just so creative, the artwork, and it was great. The gameplay, like I said, it's not anything that I've seen before. So the uniqueness of it, um, it was fantastic. Unbelievable so work by the Pythons. Great, great work. And again, continuing the tradition of the uh, Syosic coding dynasty. Yeah. Yep, yes, congratulations to all the award winner, winners. If we could bring back the map, we've got a lot of drama happening on the map here as final judging results are taking place. And as you can see, I think we'll let that, uh, I may want to update, there you go. We've got an updated one territory left in mainland to be judged and then all the capital attacks will be rendered in, rendering results. So it looks like most of those attacks were actually defended quite well. So it looks like our defenders held. So we had to, you have to try at the end. So now it's really going to come down to those capital defense projects. Keep in mind that the original capital defense project that you submitted, uh, that one was not allowed to be reused. So you have one that can hold your capital, but then you have to attack with other uh, projects. So that means that those projects have to be better than everybody else's capital defense. So um, it'll be interesting to see how this sh shakes out here right at the end. It looks as though we've got Syosset with a three-point lead. You know, once again, you never really know until the end. There's still a lot of, of attacks to be judged. Um, and now, it, like I said, it comes down to that capital defense. The submissions for the map, fantastic. Um, I'm just going to kind of get a gauge from our judges here to see what we're looking at in terms of the capital defense projects. I think in some ways it's going to be fairly quick for us to get through them and some will probably really be tough at the very end. Um, you know, I'll say with that when it came down to those capital defense projects, I'll talk a little bit about the, the three finalists there. Um, Hop Hog's approach was very artistic. Personally, I found it to be extremely enjoyable. I loved the storytelling element of it. I felt peaceful listening to the music and the screen changes. Um, it was done in uh, as a web-based project, so it was HTML coding going on in there. Um, and then the next project that we were looking at was when, was Mineola's. One of the things that stood out about uh, Mineola's project was number one, the, the cohesive storytelling from start to end, but really the, the element of adding in Aztec symbols for math and making us come up with a code and do a little search to ourselves to figure out what could these symbols mean that are gonna make us generate a code to get through a gate. Really clever, we really liked it. It was, it was, it was tough because it was you know, hard to judge against that HBT project, but just a phenomenal way to um, tell the story of this ancient alien kind of theme. So you guys did a great job, all of you. And you know, so many great projects came in. I'll have to say, I know that uh, Grand Avenue, we, it was tough. We had, your projects were awesome that came in. West Hempstead brought in a, a tremendous story telling element. There was also kind of an escape the pyramid theme going on in there. It was just awesome. So the creativity was fun. We all had a, such a tough time. And in fact, it's probably the least favorite part of the event is having to pick that best CDP project because everybody puts forward these really amazingly creative designs. So much thought process, teamwork, art. Looks like we uh, had a final judgment there where Sio Source Code took over a territory. Um, and that looks like they may have taken it from Merrick Ave. So that pushes them up one more point as we go into the uh, capital attacks. I don't think we've seen any hands turning on the capitals yet, have we? No, it looks like everybody's still sitting on their... Uh... No, it does look like we did have one turnover there with the rabbit. Got a lot of movement here, a lot of defense, a lot of good defense here at the uh, at the eleventh hour. So, um, really, it's exciting. I'm, uh, you know, 
kind of going pins and needles here, waiting to see what's going on. Yeah, so and as I look at the map, it's the middle to the right. so far, if I look at the map, it seems that we have a, uh, a couple of teams that have lost their capitals. Um, so those ones that lost their capitals, that means that another team took it over with theirs. And what you'll start to see is in that center top area where the hieroglyphs are, as they turn color, that means that once that color now matches what, like, let's say, I'll just use SIO source code because they're at the top, they're that light pink. If you see one of these capitals turn that light pink, that means SIO source code has also captured that capital. So right now, um, we have still one territory that is actively being judged on the map, and we have uh, quite a few attacks going on. We have about over close to over 30 attacks that we still have to judge on those capital defense projects. This has been a stellar, stellar competition. Kudos again. Congratulations to all of you kids. I, at the end, we normally go through it when we tell you how many projects were submitted during this event. Last year, I believe for this event, we took in 600, just over 600 projects that the judges had to evaluate during this time period. I have a feeling a little bit more this time. We have more teams. Uh, and it just seems like these teams came prepared with tons of projects. And what you're seeing over there in the combat log is Kings Park has been defending their capital from constant attack. So far, it's holding. Yeah, so far, uh, they're, they're, they're holding up. We just were just, seeing some fall there. So now we're seeing uh, Best Page and Control them. took over Kings Park. We have Sio Source Code take, took over Rams. And the judges are working hard to uh, this. It looks like we have a couple of defend defends from Kings Park at the top, but it looks like you can't shut Beth Page in control down. They were ready. They've got some projects stored there at the end. So, so just a side note, I'm not going to say who, but I'm, I'm getting text messages on my phone, people asking me if I know who's the winner, mm -hmm. uh, which I don't actually, but, uh, but I wouldn't We're tell you. We're all in the I same did. boat. <laughs> nice. I, I, I'm scoop. hearing some reports from coaches that some foam finger fights are breaking out in the room. Uh, <laughs> so if they have uh, multiple teams in the room, there might be some foam sword fights going on. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Uh, I'm excited to see how that shakes out. The foam fingers. That was a clever. That was clever. I wasn't aware of that. So that's. Uh, I might need that for the next uh, for the next one. I have to get you get you your foam finger. We had a delivery. Yeah, I'll tell you, our team was. This was a grueling prep for us. We made some big changes to our platform right before this event, and right up until last night, we were tweaking things in the map and. You know, our, the whole team came to play with this. I, I know I introduced the whole team earlier, but I can't say enough about how fantastic it's been. And we took a big risk by putting out some of these new features. Dev pushed our team beyond the point of comfort many times, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to see it all worked out. And I think we're, we're all going to sleep well tonight. <laughs> it's been a stressful <laughs> week leading it. Yeah, I think, I think we've done really, uh, I, I think it's been, uh, again, it's, it's great. And I, I have to tell you, going through the temple first, I think that was a great addition to the game. I think that really uh, put people on their toes. It also helped develop skills, but it also developed some soft skills, like you said, as far as being, uh, you know, being a good teammate, working in collaboration. Um, so really, uh, really exciting stuff. And I'm just going to ask, too, is uh, I'd like to know what the total wardrobe count changes were. I think I'm down to one more shirt. Uh, two bandanas and one hat. So well, but I'm, I'm rolling time. with this for the rest of the way through. Okay. You look like neutral you're ready colors. for summer. You look like neutral you're ready colors. to roll into summer though. Yeah, I so. picked the neutral color. So uh, this will be uh, exciting to see how this shakes out. No team favorites in other words. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to, I tried not to use team colors. Smart. Smart. Yeah. So we uh, will be making it out to some more districts and it'll be, uh, exciting to talk. We'll have some different districts coming in for the next couple of events. Some some teams only or some districts only have high school teams or maybe they only have upper elementary teams. So we'll see some new competitors. Uh, like I said before, it's bigger than it ever has been in three years. We've gone from 10 teams to 60 teams. There's so many school districts I'd love to see come into this. Um, 
I know we have some new partners coming on next year and that we'll, we'll hope they'll throw their hat into the ring. As you can see, it's fun for everybody, win or lose. But the thing that's most important is giving these kids the opportunity to compete on a team setting because, you know, we've had mentors go out and get jobs with some of the biggest tech companies and they come back and they, they put them on teams immediately. And their feedback is, wow, I didn't know I would be required to work on a team or that I'd have to fit, get selected by a team or know how to operate within it. But I think most of us who've been out there in the work world know that that's, that's reality. So yeah, the sooner absolutely. that we can give the kids this opportunity, the better for them. I work, I work with a, a great team at Cisco. I have a lot of uh, some of the most talented people I've ever gotten to work with in my career. So, uh, yeah, and we have to work uh, collaboratively and we have to work as a team. So, um, yeah, it should, should be, you know, it's, I think that's a great skill set. Um, you know, and I'm one of the things, you know, looking forward, uh, I'm what I'm really looking forward to, uh, and I'm going to ask you this question too more. I'm looking forward to interviewing Dr. Don Murphy over at Hop Hog. I got some questions for that guy and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be bringing it and I uh, hope he's ready for it. Um, is there anybody you're looking forward to, uh, that we're going to get a chance to interview? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, I'm definitely interested to get into Hop Hog and talk to uh, Dr. Murphy. I know he's just taken the helm over there, and but really, he's been the driving force uh, bringing Kidoyo into the district and really uh, found the right way. And I know he he kind of brought the terminology to us of he needed a glue to hold together all of the various efforts that he was putting forth because STEM is such a big varying uh, field. I'd also, I'm also looking forward to getting into Locust Valley. You know, one thing that was in, really unique about Locust Valley is they came onto the platform just as we were all going into virtual learning. So their teachers really trained with us exclusively through our OYO Pro Passport program, and they came out of the gates really swinging. Their library media specialists have taken this on and are really... I think showing what's possible when you embrace this as a team, they they have a good cohesive effort going on over there. So I, I want to hear how things are going now, year two for them. So I'm really looking forward to that interview for sure. I just got to, um, I just got to uh, spend some time at the New York state council school superintendents conference in Albany. I can tell you that, uh, that the hackathon was definitely a buzz up there. There are some districts that are not on the platform yet that I know were coming um, and they are coming explicitly because they want to be part of code conquest. Um, and they're, they're really looking forward to it. I know, uh, you know, a couple of, and a couple of districts that are on the platform that don't, uh, that don't have teams yet. Uh, I talked to one of the soups, uh, I'm not going to say who, but, was uh said you can uh she had mentioned you can definitely count on it next year you're gonna see that school district in here so uh yeah real excited about it and i, I think there's gonna be some great stuff and again i can't wait to go out and continue the interviews uh get some time with uh some of these great education leaders and get to pick their brain yeah i think it's exciting you know a lot of people i'll just there's a lot of rumors about what OEO means, right? So there's on your own as as one concept, and it certainly does provide that as an opportunity. But really, Kid OEO is the OEO is own your own, and that means a lot of things. But to these districts who have built robust coding programs and STEM programs, and they might not know why they would want to come on partner with somebody like Kid OEO or your class, it really is about that OEO component of it. Aside from the fact that and listen up, all you tech directors at BOCES, we will sign your Ed Law 2D contracts because we don't collect your data. We are a nonprofit organization. We're based here on Long Island, and we have a really strong drive to protect kids' rights, to protect their privacy, and most importantly, that data is yours. You own root, it's yours. So we really believe firmly in that. Districts, when you're creating, this is it becomes your platform. It becomes something that you personalize. So you could really empower the teachers that are already doing amazing things in your district. So um, we fit in in a lot of different places. And, you know, it's it's just so much fun to come in and be part of this. We're, we're all here on this tiny little island together doing some amazing things. And if you're not in, come in. It's a ton of fun and we want you here. Yeah, I, I can't reiterate it enough. And, and this should be a, a great example. You see how it pulls uh, students together. 
Um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to my company, Cisco, that allows us to participate, uh, really encourages us to get involved in the community and work with nonprofits. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm grateful to them for how, letting me uh, participate today. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't miss it now. I'm, uh, I'm having a heck of a good time. And uh, really, this is uh, I'm, I'm just anxious right now. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see what's going on here. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that all of the tension and pressure that we've seen in the rooms is similar to what's going on in the in the judging room right now. This is a big deal at the end, and it comes down to some minor details in some cases. So we really have to get our, our judges have to collectively agree on these final things. And that's, you know, it's tough. It's tough to get two people to agree, let alone an entire team full of judges. So we have, we're trying to divide and conquer and get through all of these last attacks on here so that we can reveal who the overall winner is. It's, it's tense and we're not seeing any of the real points change. And that's because as we go through the queue, the queue is really, if there's a project that was, uh, judged, but it didn't come in in time, you know, it's, they've got to all come in in the level. We have to wait for all of them to get judged. So if you, it, some of those capital defense projects might've gotten issued as an attack early on, but we still have to close out, you know, all the map attacks first. So yeah, it's a we lot give of work. a little update. The, uh, I mean, judges take this as seriously as the students do. So they are right now because of the really the, the extra time afforded to the capital defense projects. We're dealing with much more substantial review of those projects. There's more code, there's more involved in what was built. But more challenging to judge, just like it was to pick the best CDP. But uh, they're working through it together and uh, giving each project its due time and consideration. So as they work through each of the pending results, we'll start to, start to see those dwindle down and get a final game result. Sorry, and I'm muted. I'll just put it out here while I have a minute. I'm going to be posting this out very shortly on Twitter and also uh, putting it around to all of our districts. Kidoyo will be bringing in a teacher award program this summer, and we will be looking for some of our talented and motivated Kidoyo teachers out there to come in and contribute to our curriculum this summer. Um, so we have some exciting opportunities. We love working with our teachers. We always take in feedback. I think any teacher that is working with us knows that we're just a quick email away or a text message away in some cases. And we really take into heart the, the struggles that you're having in the classroom and work really hard to try to build tools for you. We have so many of our updates at this point that are named after teachers and all of the creative ideas. So it's really cool to work together and to do all this together. And we're hoping that we you know, we're looking for quite a few teachers for this summer. So if you're looking for something to do this summer, you love Kidoyo, you don't have to be an expert coder. That's, we'll take care of that. Um, we're looking for your expertise in curriculum writing and uh, aligning standards to various things. And as we all move forward to ready for the New York State computer science standards, um, we'll be making some changes. Also, uh, for those of you who came through that gate, you all know what this looks like now, but this is just part of a bigger tool that we've implemented within OYO class. We're doing all of our final testing, but it's something that you're going to see pop out into your classrooms next year. You know, the skill levels have been brought up so high by all these school districts that we are always running at full speed to stay at the front of this and stay at the front of innovation. And, and you're going to see um, a lot of these new tool sets coming into the classroom for these kids who are ready to push their skills forward. So uh, again, I'll be posting this out very quickly here. Um, and I believe I have it scheduled for April 5th. It's a late afternoon, early evening event, just an info session. So even if you're not sure, but you want to know what kind of opportunities there are to consider um, you'll tune into that and we'll get a good chance to uh, hopefully see a bunch of you in there. Uh, let's see. So we have a bunch of people back in the waiting room. And as soon as we are ready to um, move off the map, we'll bring everybody in. Um, we're not quite ready, but I can see we're down to the final wire. I think we're going to be seeing a result here. Uh, 
Yeah, we're going to see a result here posting any second. Um, the final judgments are just happening now. I think we've got it's two, close. More things, two more things to be judged. Two more. Close, and it's down in a wire, as we suspected it would be. Oh, man. Want me to I know, the tension, song? right? I can barely take it. <laughs> Let me see my, sing my mentor, Doug Zone. Oh, yeah, do it. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, last night at like nine o'clock at night, I get an email with a custom written song for Mentor, for Mentor Doug. Doug. Maybe the last one. We'll, we'll, we'll work up to that. I'll, br I'll break out the guitar, too. Little, okay. Got a little a ukulele little you could play? Yeah, I could play something. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I got to tell you, this is tense. Can't wait to see the answer here and uh, see what's going to happen. Should be... Uh, I'll tell you what, this was, this was an amazingly tense event I, all the way around. I know I, we're going to pop out to our judges after this, and I'm sure that they need the weekend. This is why these events are scheduled for Fridays. It's mostly for us <laughs> because we need to recover. So, all right. I think that we are ready for the uh, final submission to be made. and. Uh, Everybody's coming back into, in from the breakout rooms. Is that what's happening? If your breakout rooms will close in just a few seconds. Everybody will be brought back in here. It'd be great to have cameras on. Um, and feel free to have mics off if you want to. You can unmute yourself. Yep, I rendered it. All right, everyone's making their way in to the main session. And we have a winner. Sio source code from Southwoods Middle School. Congratulations, Siosit. Sio source code from Southwoods Middle School. Great job. Excellent epic battle. Fantastic. A testament and persistence. Way to go. Couldn't be prouder of that team. Couldn't be prouder of all teams. Great competition. Please let we have uh, HMS Hop Hog Code and Eagles sitting in the second place position, closely followed by Manhaxet Potatoes. Right after that, we have Mineola Matrix, HBT Pythons, ESM, and HBT Pythons again. Great job, everybody. This was a phenomenal event. I know that you guys will all be celebrating all weekend long. You deserve it. And we'll see you soon with that big trophy, Syosset. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Woohoo! Happy weekend. Congratulations, everybody. Look forward to seeing you all soon on the platform. Thank you, judges. Fantastic work. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>